featuring college baseball blue bloods, the number one Texas Longhorns, and the 9-1 LSU Tigers. And welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Brett Dolan with Pat Combs. Delighted to have you with us. The crowd should be electric tonight here at Minute Maid. And when you talk about Texas, Pat, the number one team in the country, it's pitching, it's defense. I'm not sure there's a deeper staff in the country. Yeah, no doubt, Brett. It really is the deepest staff in college baseball. They've got starting pitching. They've got deep bullpen. But tonight, you get to see Tristan Stevens, who's an absolute gift coming back to the University of Texas. Could have gone to the pro ranks, but David Pierce, Longhorns, bring him back. He has been outstanding. 2-0 on the season, has yet to give up an earned run. He's going to face an LSU offense. They have a core four of big-time bats. In fact, maybe five outstanding hitters. They were held in check early last night, but it's hard to keep them down for nine innings. Well, no doubt about it, and LSU fans will tell you, you're going to remember these names in college baseball for a long time. Morgan, Cruz, Doty, and Barry. All sophomores, three of the four are hitting above 400. This may be the top four college hitters in all of college baseball. Tremendous hitters. Great pitchers. College baseball blue bloods. The Texas Longhorns, the LSU Tigers. Can't wait to get this one underway. Our starting lineup, our first pitch straight ahead from Minute Maid Park. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. But the tournament itself has got a great field, a uh, great venue, and I get to come home. And we have a lot of players that are from the Houston area, so they get to come home and play in the ballpark that they go watch their big league club with, and so it's been cool. That's Texas head coach David Pierce on what it means for his team to play this event in this ballpark in this atmosphere. We've been waiting for this one for weeks. Certainly LSU after last night hoping their dramatics carry over. They were down 3 nothing in the contest last night to Oklahoma. Able to come back late. In fact, a couple of times down to their final out were able to extend the ball game. And then Jordan Thompson led off the bottom of the 11th with this big time blast. This ball landed up off the back of the Crawford boxes. A walk off home run. And Pat, the Tigers able to celebrate a 5 4 win a couple of times. It did not look good for LSU winning the game. Now, outstanding end to last night's affair. And Jordan Thompson, of course, the huge walk off home run. After a couple of big hits from K. Doty, a double and a home run to tie it to two separate occasions, and Thompson wins it with the bomb. So LSU 9 and 1 now with the win. Anxious to see what they can do tonight against this 
number one rag Texas Longhorns team. It's always fun when these two programs are competing to get to Omaha. It's one thing just with their notoriety in their past, but also teams performing at a big-time level. And this is the starting lineup today for the Texas Longhorns, brought to you by Texas Crown Club Whiskey. Douglas Hodo the third, Eric Kennedy, Ivan Melendez, the top three. Then it's Daly, Ardwan, and Staley. Messenger at third base, Faltini at short, and Dylan Campbell will bat ninth in right field. Texas lineup able to produce seven runs last night against Tennessee. In fact, they found ways. They're not a big power hitting team. They were able to get men on base, find that two or three run inning, use the small ball when they need to, to put runs on the board for their outstanding pitching staff. And that's the Texas offense. They scratch out wins. They find ways to beat you. They play small ball. They put runners in motion. That's how David Pierce has constructed this lineup, and they, they execute it very well. A lot of great situational hitters in that Texas Longhorn lineup. This feel like a college football game to you? Yeah, sure tonight? does, man. This place is electric. <laughs> They've opened up some additional sections that have never been used here at the college class. These fans started arriving before game two of three in order to sneak into the best seats. The club level is well occupied. The lower level is full. The Crawford box is well populated. Even the bleachers in right out near the Houston bullpen during the big league season has fans. And I'm not sure, Pat, that we won't see a few more thousand sneak in before we really get into the middle innings of this game. Well, it is a sea of burnt orange and purple and gold. And you're right, Brett. It does feel like a football atmosphere. feels like an Omaha-type atmosphere. Man, we're only three weeks into the college season. This feels like postseason. Well, it certainly does. And again, this area in Houston, great as far as the alumni for both Texas and LSU. And the fans have made a weekend of this event. And for LSU, that big win yesterday. Got the three days off to a good start. We were down three to nothing. Came back and tied up the game only to see Oklahoma score in the 10th inning. And LSU down to its final strike in the bottom of the 10th before that double from Doty that you mentioned, and he was the guy that hit the homer in the eighth inning that tied things yeah, up before. Twice. Yeah, just some clutch hitting by Kay Doty, and you've come to expect that with this LSU lineup, but you still, at the end of the day, have to perform, and Doty did it masterfully last night, put Jordan Thompson, gave him the opportunity, went with that walk-off home run, and boy, they just broke the hearts of the Oklahoma Sooners on three different comeback occasions. Trent Wittmeyer in the middle of that huddle. Getting his Tigers fired up, and LSU will take the field, and the Texas Longhorns, the visiting team, will get their first cracks tonight. And we're going to get a look at Ty Floyd, the pitcher for LSU. Off to a good start, as this entire team is. Step up in weight class, though, tonight. And we heard from David Pierce earlier. He used to be a bullpen pitcher here with the Houston Astros. Think about his career that was at Sam Houston State on to Tulane and Certainly, Pat, it was big for him to take this program to the College World Series last year. Yeah, you come to Texas with the expectations that uh, the Texas Longhorn faithful always have as to get to the College World Series. And anything less for the Burnt Orange is typically a disappointment. But David Pierce has built quite a roster here. And he has done a tremendous job of getting the Longhorn Nation back to the expectations of, of Texas old. 37th trip to the College World Series. Jay Johnson was in the CWS last year with the Arizona Wildcats. And after that ended, made the move to LSU. And excited to be in SEC country. And he has built some great programs and had a lot of success with the Wildcats. Well, he sure has. What a great resume for Jay Johnson. And of course, when the phone call came, you know, he had his team in the postseason last year. The Arizona Wildcats they made the run to the College World Series. And he said there was no other job in college baseball he would have entertained. But when LSU made the call, he said, I had to think about that. And they gave me some time to take my team through the postseason. And after we uh, talked about it, he came to the decision to come to Baton Rouge. Tell me about Ty Floyd, tonight's starter for the Tigers. Yeah, Floyd, like a lot of these LSU Tiger pitchers, he arrived with high acclaim and you know had some ups and downs his freshman season. Had an ERA just north of four. But he has just made a massive leap in his development. He 
He takes over Jay Johnson's Saturday starter role. He has been solid. 2-0, 10 innings pitched, a 1.8 ERA. Really good strikeout to ball. Walk ratio at 13 and 5. Hitters only hitting 094 against him. Our nightcap last night started at 830 after LSU played the four and a half hour game. Getting started on time tonight. And Douglas Hodo the third ready to step in. Roof closed, indoor baseball, massive crowd, college baseball style. The Blue Bloods, LSU and Texas, and our nightcap is underway. Clint Fagan calling balls and strikes tonight. Hodo hitting 333. He's knocked in three runs, already 15 hits on the season. Well, not much of a question of who was going to play center field for the Horns this year. That was Douglas Hodo, but there was a question about who would lead off in this lineup. And Hodo has had an impressive fall and early spring. And he has assumed that role and taken it and done well with it. He is the fastest Longhorn on the roster. Well, we say that, but you could say Eric Kennedy. You could also say <laughs> a couple of guys, but Douglas Hodo is certainly one of the top guys in speed. Hit 281 a year ago. And even though this team is known for the way they play defense and the way they pitch, they've outscored their opponents by a score of 79 to 12 this year. That's a little miss. Ty Floyd gets the K to begin the game. Well, Juan Floyd finishes Hodo with the hard fastball down and away, and that ball just running a little bit cut action to it. 93 miles now on the gun, and Hodo not able to catch up. 93, we saw Ben Joyce of Tennessee throwing 101, 102 for an entire inning in game two. Yeah, that definitely looked hard, <laughs> but uh, Ty Floyd, it, it's, it's a little bit of late movement on that fastball that as well. Great. Pretty high spin rate. Here's Eric Kennedy. He's off to a tremendous beginning. 13 hits and 31 at-bats. And a 419 clip. He has been the master of infield hits and bun hits. Last year he had 16 bun hits. Spraying the ball around the yard a little more this year. And he'll wave and miss with the 94 mile an hour pitch. Kennedy can pick him up and set him down quickly and even a routine ground ball he can make interesting. And a swing and a miss. That might be the example of that late life you're talking about. These hitters have looked well behind pitchers. Yeah, Floyd, uh, you know, it says 93 on the gun, but hitters will tell you when you see a high rate, high spin rate fastball coming in above the hands, it just seems harder than what the gun shows. Mr. the wind and the pitch from Floyd. Two and two. Floyd works from that far first base side of the rubber. And that one served right back to the screen by Kennedy. So far, Floyd sticking with that fastball. Here to the first couple of Texas hitters. Got a pretty good slider. That pitch will come in in low 80s. And a changeup. High again, and the count has gone full. And we saw catcher Alex Malazzo set up inside. Floyd not able to deliver to his spot. Ready for a payoff pitch. Served on the ground, headed to the right, base hit. Eric Kennedy aboard with one out in the Texas Longhorn first inning. Well, Kennedy, good job of sitting fastball at 3-2 count. It was coming. Got the barrel out in front. Delivers the first base hit for these Longhorns. And it brings up Ivan Melendez. He had a triple last night that ricocheted around the pillars and the Crawford boxes. It was... A minute made three base hit with all the quirks and the uniqueness of this ballpark. 
So he had a double and a triple, part of a two for four game. Hit a couple of tape measure home runs this season. That's a pick at first. And Morgan, who erased a base runner yesterday until they went to review and called obstruction and advanced that runner over to second base, thought he had a tag. Well, that's the quick athletic feat of pitcher Ty Floyd. Quick move to first base, and Trey Morgan may have the quickest tag in college baseball. <laughs> He slaps it down fast. Kennedy was swimming back into the base. But Melendez nicknamed the Hispanic Titanic. <laughs> Who says they don't have nicknames as good as they used to from yesteryear? There you go. You know, refer to this left center power alley here at Minute Maid as Pinball Alley. And we saw just why last night with that Melendez blast. It's just north of the 366 sign. He just kept right on running. That's really close at first. I thought Joe Harris was going to punch out Kennedy. Yeah, Kennedy lost his footing that time and kind of spinning his wheels a bit. Well, he was back, leaning, wasn't he? Yeah, just back in time. There goes Kennedy. Pitches up and out. Good one to throw on. Not in time. Malazzo. Put a strike on the base, but Kennedy swipes his third of the season. That's about as quick of a pop time and a throw as you're going to see from a college catcher. Alex Malazzo does his job, but just under the tag is Eric Kennedy. He was peeking on that path to second. If you weren't with us in game one, the Baylor Bears swiped six bases in the first inning. Yeah, that was something to watch <laughs> in the first inning. You talk about trying to have quick moves or quick steps, trying to quicken the pace to the plate. If you don't do it at this level of baseball, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get a lot of stolen bases. Well placed fastball in the outside corner for a called strike. What are the emotions like right now for Ty Floyd pitching in this atmosphere, in this environment of 20, 25,000 people? Well, I think the great news for both clubs is they typically pitch in front of at least 10 to 15,000 fans per game. And so, you know, yeah, it's a big stage here at a major league ballpark. But You're telling me it doesn't feel any different. Oh, tonight. man, you get juiced up. <laughs> okay, of course what you I do, thought. Brent. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's not the first time these guys have pitched in front of big crowds. So yeah, it's not their first rodeo. Yeah. Exactly right. You look for guys that have that experience, that know how to handle the pressure, the stress of pitching in this type of an environment. Certainly Ty Floyd has been there, done that. Here's a 2-2 to Melinda. What I would be worried about as a pitching coach is just that extra adrenaline early, Pat. Maybe trying to overthrow, leaving some pitches up in the zone, not having the break on my breaking balls and feeling a little bit out of sync for maybe the first 15, 20 pitchers. Well, that's always the challenge for any starting pitcher. They'll tell you that's that adrenaline rush you get. You know, you warm up in the bullpen, you step over that line into the white lines, and it's, it's a different feeling. And that's always the challenge for starting pitchers. How quickly can they settle in and not overthrow and leave pitches out over the plate? And the uniqueness of this event with three games a day, you're not coming to the ballpark, hanging out on the training table or in the locker room. You get here, you wait for the second game to finish, and all of a sudden it's a race over about 55 minutes to get down on the field, start to get warmed up before we can start this one. Yeah, that is the difference. I would say this has a postseason feel. That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like a regional competition where you may have a game or two in front of you, and you don't know what time your game's going to start. So, again, the challenges of playing in a tournament-type atmosphere, that's why these coaches love it. It prepares their players for what's coming down the road. And Melendez waves and misses at a high one for the second out. This time, Floyd elevates the fastball, and... That's the pitch that Melendez and the Horns will have to stay off tonight. Floyd collects a lot of strikeouts above those hands. When you even read the bio in the LSU guide, when it comes to Ty Floyd, it says fastball with exploding life. <laughs> it gets back to that, that late action, that movement. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I'm telling you, Brett, you ask most scouts hitters, well, that fastball has a higher spin rate. It gets mentioned a lot now in baseball, but when it does, it looks harder than what's showing on the gun. And that's, with the, these Texas hitters are going to have to stay off of that high fastball. This is Mitchell Daly coming off a year where he hit 316, a little slower beginning at 188. 
He's knocked in six runs, trying to pick up his teammate Kennedy from second and start the scoring. Floyd yanked that one. 93 off the corner. Last time this Texas Longhorn team lost, it was to the Texas Exes in their alumni game. Since then, they've run the table. <laughs> All 10. Been a great streak for Texas, and they have played some quality competition. That's in the air to right center. Playable for DiGiacomo. They like the catch. And in the inning, Longhorn's going to hit. They strand a runner. And the LSU Fighting Tigers coming in the back. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Take your favorite teams with you with the brand new AT&T Sportsnet mobile app. Just download the free app from iTunes or Google Play, log in with your TV provider account info, and you're all set. Don't wait. Download the new and improved AT&T Sportsnet mobile app today. Here's our starting lineup for LSU, brought to you by Marucci. Trey Morgan leads off, and Dylan Cruz and Kay Doty, the top three. Doesn't get any easier with Jacob Berry, Jordan Thompson, Last night's hero, and then Joe Bear, the DH. Dugas batting seventh, DiGiacomo hitting eighth. Malazzo will catch in bat ninth. For head coach Jay Johnson up there in the top step of the dugout. Tristan Stevens will make the start for the Texas Longhorns. Well, we've already talked about the numbers, the outstanding start to this 22 campaign for Tristan Stevens. The 6'2", 200 pounder from Springfield, Missouri. You know, he just pounds the strike zone. And Pitches to contact. He's very difficult to square up. But uh, David Pierce said his greatest asset is really not his stuff. It's his will to win. Pierce says he competes as well as any pitcher he has ever coached. He really is a great story when it comes to a guy that you might consider a little bit of a late bloomer. Someone who's made the most of his opportunity. The long journey as a high school junior. He was throwing in the low 80s. He committed to Central Missouri, a Division II school. Here he is pitching on this stage tonight for Texas. Trey Morgan lifts one down the line and left. Kennedy is playing this ballpark like he's here on a regular basis. He's made a couple of nice efforts, and Morgan retired. He sure has. First pitch swinging Trey Morgan. Guess his fastball gets it. We talk about how much speed this Texas outfield has, and Eric Kennedy can cover a lot of ground. Negotiates the wall in the corner there at Minute Maid Ballpark. Does it very well. There's Dylan Cruz. Well, Cruz is hitting this year. It's 447 with a couple of home runs. The 14 runs batted in. But Tristan Stevens committed to Central Missouri. Hit a growth spurt. Velocity went up. Started at the junior college ranks. Lines his way to Texas. That's a one half of the third. Handled by the KU transfer messenger. Throws out Dylan Cruz for out number two. You know, three pitches from Tristan Stevens, two outs, and that's his M.O. We talk about pitching to contact. This is exactly what you get from Tristan Stevens. He'll mix his pitches up. Got a really solid three-pitch mix, fastball, slider, changeup. Just commands the zone very well. Here's Kay Doty.
Had the two-run homer in the eighth inning yesterday. Tied the game with Oklahoma at three. Down to the final strike in the bottom of the tenth, trailing by a run. He doubled in Trey Morgan to force another frame, and LSU would win it in the eleventh. Facing Tristan Stevens, who's been able to pick up a couple of quick outs. Despite that journey I mentioned, though, of Stevens, Pat, you think about committing to a D2 school and going to Juco ranks. Even when he got to Texas, that wasn't the end of it. Tommy John surgery, a back injury. I mean, it has truly been a winding, twisting rope. No, it sure has. And it's a testament to his determination, his perseverance. You know, you love those types of stories, Brett, because it's players who overcome adversity. And those are the guys you typically see become successful, not only in, in the game, but in life. And certainly Tristan Stevens has been through a ton to get to this point in his career. I mean, Sometimes baseball, like life, can be a game of how bad you want it. There's a jump for the third. Messenger gets the big bounce. Hey, we're off and rolling tonight. One scoreless sitting in the books. Texas and LSU. Could be a fun night at college baseball. With Home Chef, your home cooking is home nailing it. Our classic all-in-one meal kits are simple enough for anyone and delicious enough for everyone. When it comes to making dinner, fill in the blanks with Home Chef. Delicious, meat simple. Get $90 off when you sign up at homechef.com. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. to the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Shriners Children's, celebrating 100 years of life-changing care. Ty Floyd back to the mound in the top of the second inning. Ready to look at Silas Ardwan, Murphy Staley, and Skyler Messenger. Pat, this is a game of this nine-game event that I think a lot of people have circled for quite some time. Oh, no doubt. Around college baseball, of course, you get to Texas with that number one preseason ranking. LSU in many publications was between 7 and 17, and they have since moved up from that ranking. And you get a matchup of top five teams this early on in college baseball. And we're in for a treat tonight. And Silas Ardwan, catcher with a home run, 10 knocked in. the son of Danny, a former fifth-round pick of Oakland back in 1995. Spent 15 years in pro ball, five of the majors. And hard one has always had the reputation of a defensive catcher. When talking to David Pierce about his improvement at the bat, he said it's just been steady improvement. And he is now starting to really put some charges in the ball, just like this one. That one's out to left center and off the fence. Cruz will play the carom perfectly, and Ardwan will start the second with a ringing double. Well, that ball was a close line, hitting halfway up off the fence near that 399 sign. You were saying about his bat? <laughs> well, the only thing Ardwan didn't do with that uh, with that ball was get enough air underneath it. The ball hit uh, deep in the corner, just off of the left side of center field towards that 399 sign. And he gets a little bit more carry and air underneath it. That ball's out of here. 
He'll take the double. It's a Texas team with six home runs this year. And I think when you follow LSU or you're in the SEC, sometimes you equate teams' run scoring ability to how many home runs they hit. Not only because of the direct correlation, but that's sort of how they are designed to win games. We know Texas is a team that'll try and get that big inning, not afraid to play a little bit of small ball, maybe move the runners, take advantage of their speed, and then try and get an advantage to these pitchers. Well, that's it. We call it situational baseball, and that's what David Pierce and this Texas lineup, they do it very well. They realize when you have the top pitching in college baseball, you know, three to four runs can oftentimes feel like five, six, or seven runs. And so they'll play and scratch and they'll try to get on the board early, put some pressure on the opposition with that pitching staff. It's two at home to the D.H. Murphy Staley. David Pierce does coach third base. Think about Staley. He's a Carlsbad, California native. Played at Orange Coast Community College in 2019. And, of course, his head coach would have been John Altabella. The man who was on that tragic helicopter crash with Kobe Bryant. Oh, man. That's right. Well, LSU defense set up corners about even with the bag. Middle of the defense playing straight up on the infield. The outfield actually has Staley shaded to right. Center fielder Dylan Cruz about 15 steps over towards right center. Flair out to left, carrying towards Dugas. Easy play for the first down. A masterful job by Ty Floyd there. Kept pounding the fastball inside on Staley, not allowing him to stay behind the baseball. Staley was trying to shoot that ball to the right side, but Ty Floyd just pounded that fastball in. Hey, real estate is a precious commodity in this building. Those fans lined up on the railings out there in left center. Home run alley. You better not give up your spot. Go grab a hot dog <laughs> or a beverage. It might not you won't get, get it back. <laughs> Here's Skyler Messenger. Bad transfer from Kansas. Been a little different stage, even though he's been in the same conference for Messenger. That was a huge pickup for David Pierce. Consider he's a senior who was able to grad transfer out of Kansas, and Messenger just gives a little more stability to the infield. Played 186 games in Kansas. This is a mile foul in the air down the line and left and back up into the well populated seats. He's had a solid college career and pitch up and in on his hands. Able to get that hit through, yeah. <laughs> Lead off double by Ardoin, a fly out by Staley. Messenger's put a lot of work in with hitting coach Troy Tulowitzki, and Tulo says the adjustments he's made has really added to his power. Didn't hit a lot of home runs at Kansas, just six there in all those games I mentioned, nearly 200. But you look at his body type, you think there's more there. I called a 15-inning Texas Longhorn fall game when they played McLennan, the junior college defending national champions, and he homered there. Just giving you a glimpse of what it could be. Yeah. Well, it's uh, pretty cool to have Tulo as your hitting coach as well. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Infield coach, uh, advisor, whatever the case may be for Tulo. He said a mile in the air to right. To Giacomo has got a long run. He's back shy of the track, and he'll put it away. Ardron will not try and advance. He's quickly two outs. And the messenger just missed that pitch. As you said, Brett hit a mile high here at Minute Maid and almost looked like it was heading for the rafters before it comes down and just missed the home run. Now speaking of home runs, Trey Faltini steps in. Trey hit one to the edge of the Crawford boxes last night, his second of the year. Local product from Travis High School. 
play for Rodney Hernandez. He was drafted a couple of years ago very late in the 39th round by Boston. Faltini is very projectable at that next level as far as professional baseball goes. You, you love the build, very athletic shortstop. Has some power. It's gotten better and better here in his career at Texas. Got a little bit of swing and miss in his swing. I think he, if he can fix that. He's got a promising future. I saw him at a state's play event sponsored by Major League Baseball a couple of years ago. They played a three game series, California against Texas at the old Ranger Stadium. And the best part about that event, it was headlined by a gay guy named Bobby Witt Jr. <laughs> That's a pretty good headline. <laughs> Number one prospect in, in baseball right now. They are going to walk Faltini. Indeed they are. Go ahead and put Faltini aboard for Dylan Campbell, who's on deck. Campbell hitting 200 with four runs batted in. He has an opportunity to make LSU pay for that free pass. Well, Campbell had an outstanding fall for the horns and really gives David Pierce some options. Another Houston kids, great Jesuit high school product back. I can play outfield, infield, very versatile player. Only 32 at bats a year ago, but really put on a show this past fall. Two on, two out, second inning. Looking for the game's first run tonight. He'll be back and out of play. Thirty six pitches twenty three for strikes for Ty Floyd. Good ratio but second inning in a row Texas has had a winner scoring position. Long pause before the two strike pitch. Too close. Fans all the way out into the bleachers and right. Gamble waiting. And Floyd pitcher. Little chopper. This is a no man's land. Floyd with the bare hand. He skips up off the screen. That's got to be out of play. And the first run of this game scores on a swinging bunt and a ball that was thrown away. Yeah, you're going to look back at this. Ty Ford is. He's going to wish he probably would have eaten that ball. And it's an errant throw that didn't need to be made at that point. That lead to the first Texas run. And how about that? A 30 foot swinging bunt. And Dylan Campbell. Comes up big for the long boys. Morgan will just about make any play if you give him a fighting chance, but that was not one of them. Yeah, that ball is off the screen, but they call it in play at Minute Maid Park. Well, Campbell was given second. Jay Johnson wants an explanation. I can't imagine how that screen would be in play. Joe Harris, the first base umpire, was running towards the play at that, as that ball batted off the netting. Jay saying it's not arena football. Just says, all right, okay, we'll talk about <laughs> David it. David Pierce Leave not making alone. an argument because you would think the Longhorns may say if it's going to be out of play, then maybe you send Faltini home. We've had our fair share of replay reviews over the course of what is now six games of the nine this weekend. There were 
a couple of years, Pat, we were doing this event a long time ago where we had the replay, but we didn't have umpire replay review. That's and right. I think that's been a nice addition when you have the technology and the cameras and venues such as this. Well, no doubt. Here's the play again. Floyd, a really athletic pitcher, but that uh, even if he makes a perfect throw, I don't think he gets Campbell at first base. And you can see the ball comes up off the net, kind of lands on that railing by the LSU dugout. Morgan picks it up cleanly, but we'll see uh, how the review turns out. Home plate umpire Clint Fagan and first base umpire Joe Harris on the review. Campbell was given an infield single, then the throwing error allowing the runners to advance. And Ty Floyd. You know, hard one would have scored anyway on the, on the errant throw, so there's the ball. It, it hits off the net, clearly. And Morgan picks it up off the railing. At times it feels like there's two Trey Morgans out there. I mean, we saw him truck the first base coach yesterday in uh, Oklahoma. Play I mean, laying him yeah. out. He had an obstruction on what was first a pick off and after replay review. The runner not only was put back on the base, he was given second on the air for the obstruction. Then he made a couple of great picks with his athleticism at first base. Yeah, sure did. The show hair, I think that's what Bregman called it. Show hair, there you go. Yeah, and I talked to Clay Overcash in the Sooner dugout this morning. I, first thing I asked is, are you okay? And he said, yeah. He goes, you know, just kind of surprising. But he said, you know, he pointed down to his knee. He says, I'm, I had knee surgery and I can't move real well. So the ruling is that the ruling stands. The ball did not leave the field of play. So runners will be at second and third. So there's the right call, and now we're going to have a visit by LSU. Heading out to the mound is pitching coach Jason Kelly. Came to LSU from ASU. Arizona State. Clint Fagan providing further explanation to Jay Johnson. I think the conversation here, Pat, just taking the temperature of Floyd because it was close to getting out of the inning. They went ahead and put Faltini on to face Campbell. The swinging bunt hit, the throwing air, and all of a sudden, a runs in, second and third. Now it's back to the top of the line. The lineup has turned over pretty quickly here, and Floyd has had a bit of trouble. And that pitch count's already starting to creep up a bit. This will be his 39th pitch of the night. He did strike out Hodo back in the first, and here he is again. Off the corner for ball one. That's the one thing that these reviews in college baseball have done. It slows the game down, and if you're a pitcher who likes to pitch with rhythm, sometimes difficult when you've got those three, four, five-minute waits. Doesn't help. Did you play against Hodo's father? I did. Yeah, he was at University of Texas, and he was a, a dual-sport athlete. Played some football there as well. Dad Doug, a starting outfielder on the 83 College World Series team. And I know Douglas's grandfather, Douglas Hodo, who uh, became president of Houston Baptist University. 2-0 pitch. Thrill to left. Back to the Crawford boxes. Goodbye. What a time for Hodo's first home run of the season. A no doubter to left. And with one big swing, it's 4 nothing Longhorn. Oh, how this inning has turned. That hit off the bricks behind the Crawford boxes. Yeah, no dead up from Douglas Hodo. And how about that? He just drops the bat head in the zone. And fastball by Ty Floyd. Down and in. That was almost like a left-handed swing when he slipped. He see those left-handers drop that bat head. And Hodo just catches it square. Off the facade above the Crawford seats. Just like that, Texas up four zip. Here's Eric Kennedy. After the leadoff double by Ardwan, a couple of flyouts did not move Ardwan. And then Faltini was issued that free pass before the infield single, the throwing air, and the three run bomb.
Maybe LSU just likes to make things interesting because they were down three nothing yesterday, and then down four three in extras. Had to find those bats late. We know what this offense is capable of. These Tigers can score runs in bunches. It's a little bit up and in. And Floyd really battling with his command tonight. He's not quite as sharp as we've seen him. Kennedy really crowding the plate. Look at that front foot. I'll take ball four. Problem is, there's not anybody warming up in the bullpen. So if Ty Floyd doesn't find it soon, this inning could balloon even further. And there's a couple of outs, and Jason Kelly is really betting on his starter, just the faith and trust he has in Ty Floyd to get himself out of this inning. Now he's going to face the Titanic, Ivan Melendez. Went down on strikes facing Floyd in the first. And look for Kennedy to run here, try to pick a pitch to run on. Put himself in a position for Melendez. Just misses up. Just. And you see the leg kick by Floyd. That's the issue with how runners can get a pretty good jump on him. It's about 1 5, 1 6 to the plate. No doubt Kennedy would love a chance to run. To see what he can do. Draw another throw. Has to scramble back in. No doubt Ford has a quick move to first base. He does to keep Kennedy close. And he swept 18 bases last year, and Pat, that's a huge number in today's college baseball. Sure is. Really quicker step there by Floyd, and they're going to call a balk. Floyd did not come to set. And uh, Michael Durantis, the second base umpire, with the balk call. Our bingo cards being filled out nicely over six games of this college class. Had an instruction. We had a hit-by-pitch overruled and then turned into a strikeout. And no argument from the LSU dugout. We saw Floyd do that in the first inning. Floyd really doesn't want to do up any further damage. Melendez, the eighth man to hit this inning. Missing again, two at home. And the problem with Floyd's misses is they're up in the zone and well, you can't get that slider over or something other than the fastball. The Texas hitters are just sitting dead red on him. That is the issue. Two oh pitch. Get up into the rafters out there to right field. The Giacomo camped underneath it and the inning ends. So Floyd able to end the top of the second. The Douglas total the third. Had the big shot with a three-run homer. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone from loving halls that brought me home. 
My world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. What if you could use retirement accounts to invest in crypto? With iTrust Capital, you can. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in your favorite crypto assets 24-7 with the tax benefits of an IRA. So instead of paying taxes on your crypto gains every year, you can defer taxes till you retire using an iTrust IRA. Or with an iTrust Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement because you're in this for the long haul. Start investing today at iTrustCapital.com. Tours at Minute Maid Park are available now. Come see the ballpark, get a behind-the-scenes look at the ins and the outs of the stadium. From the dugout and press box to the warning track and manual scoreboard, we guarantee you've never seen Minute Maid Park like this. So book your tour today at astros.com slash tours. If you'd come this weekend, Pat Combs would give you a tour of the press box himself because he's going all nine this weekend. The personal tour. Come on up and see us. I'm not talking innings. I'm talking games. <laughs> Just like Alex Bregman popped into our, our <laughs> booth last night and sat down and had a conversation with us. Wasn't that a fantastic Man, visit? That was Baseball fantastic. Hitting and this ballpark. I love to pick his brain on, on hitting, and he gave us uh, some great analysis last night. Well, the Tigers have some work to do. They went one, two, three against Tristan Stevens in the first, and now trailing four nothing. Now Baylor was trailing four nothing. Or they had a 4-0 lead, I should say, over Tennessee in the first game. And Tennessee at one point then ran off 10 unanswered. It can happen. Uh, both of these lineups, we talk about uh, the power that these Tigers have. It's up and down the, the order. And we talk about putting stress on a pitching staff, and that's certainly what these Tigers do. Smashed off the bat of Barry to Faltini. A nice back in. And he'll throw out the LSU third baseman. And that was a hot shot to Hopper. Nothing routine about that backhand from Faltini, and he just makes it look easy. That's well, going to bring up last night's hero. How much sleep do you think Jordan Thompson got last night after he <laughs> went back to the hotel? I mean, texts and calls from friends and family oh, in the wee hours. Yeah, that's when the feet hit the ground, right? Probably hasn't happened yet. He hit the walk-off home run in the big league ballpark, and... That was quite a comeback on a number of occasions for LSU and Thompson capping it off with the walk off home run. First of the year for Thompson and needless to say. One that made for a happy night for LSU. And there's the old veteran Tristan Stevens when you Team stakes you to a 4 nothing lead. What do you do as a pitcher when you go out and pound the strike zone and don't change a thing? You keep pitching your game and focus on making quality pitches. Keep working ahead of hitters. That's typically how Stevens operates. Two on pitch to Thompson. In there for a called strike. To the Chula Vista, California native. Sixty-one starts a year ago. It's a battle of the arm sleeves here, huh? Stevens with the color on his left arm. Thompson with the color on his right. Make it his left. Hit up near the roof again. Faltini back there starting to drift, but he'll camp underneath it and make the catch. And that's five up, five down for Tristan Stevens against the Tigers. Well, he pitches to contact. That's exactly what David Pierce says. You know, there's nothing that's going to light the radar gun up, but I love watching pitchers pitch. It's not just a... Uh, Guys in this Texas staff that have great arms and can certainly light the radar gun up, but that's what David Pierce and Sean Allen do at Texas. They develop these guys into pitchers, and that's what you love to see. 
This is the DH Joe Bear, and he's going to spank one to right and right to camera. There's two perfect innings for Tristan Stevens. It's the Texas Longhorns up early. Or not. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego. I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a, mile a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile in my, in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. Hey, I'm Matt Adams, host of the Fairways of Life show, and you can catch us every week right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Long-form interviews with legends of the game and today's stars. If it happens in golf, we'll take you inside of the ropes right here on the Fairways of Life show. Big night at Minute Maid Park. And a big inning for the Texas Longhorns in the second. They played at four runs, all coming with two outs. Blast was the Douglas Hodo three-run homer. Now the Longhorns at the heart of the lineup up this inning. Daly, Arduan, and Staley. Think about Texas. Patton. Obviously, they made yet another trip to the College World Series last year. They're 37. They went three and two at Omaha. Their two losses were to Mississippi State by one run. The defending national champions. Yeah, that's exactly right. Think about that. They're just one run away from either being in the title game or, or winning another title. And, and then uh, what happens to this lineup? Well, everybody comes back, right? It does help. <laughs> you lose Ty Madden in the draft. That's a big loss, but uh, plenty of arms that have come to the rescue here for Texas. Get uh, Tristan Stevens back. We talked about that being the gift that David Pierce was not expecting. And, of course, you've got uh, Tanner Witt, who we'll see tomorrow, who had a spectacular freshman season at Texas. And looking forward to that. Well, i got to believe, Pat, in addition to having so many of these veterans and returning starters back, if you just needed any motivation, when you're in the weight room of the offseason, you're taking some extra swings in November, December, working out on the mound, you're thinking one more run. <laughs> That's one right. More win. One more huh? win. Yep. And of course, you get Ivan Melendez back, and you know, that was Another a player I for yeah. sure thought was not going to come back. I mean, it, you think about a guy that uh, should be playing at the next level. And we, we co of course, we talk about the age of college baseball. It's older now. You know, 22, 23 years old is probably the average age. And, but Melendez chose to come back. That was a huge gift for David Pierce. That's strike three to Mitchell Daly. I don't know about you, Pat, but I've lost the ability and the perspective looking at a roster and thinking, well, he'll be back. He's going to go to the draft because it used to be we might miss on an occasional player, somebody that might fall out of their, their slot value or their range. But for the most part, you knew who was going to have that chance at the next level and who was going to have to come back. And now it's anybody's guess. It's a crash. <laughs> well, it is. It's just been a, you know, we look back at the draft of five rounds two years ago and then 20 rounds last year. Of course, there was a lot of free agent offerings to college players, but you know, they, the, the money wasn't that good. I think a lot of guys looked at that and said, I'd rather go back to school than either finish my degree or get another degree, but to further my, my baseball development back at school. I've heard some guys talk about the fact that maybe a couple of years ago they thought for sure they were going to get drafted. 2020 obviously was impacted. You get an extra COVID year. I didn't heard a few say, well, this could be it for me. I, I don't know if there's going to be an opportunity because of the reduced number of teams, the reduced opportunities. 
And then they've said, if I've got to have one more year, I want to do it in the Big 12. I want to do it in the SEC. That's, I want to enjoy exactly this experience. Right. Brett, you, you're on to something there. And I tell you, it's, uh, I, I know a lot of players I've coached that have gone on, and you know one of them that played at Arkansas, drafted in the fourth round by the Royals, who retired this past season, Eric Cole. And, you know, you played a big-time SEC program. You, you play in front of 15, 20,000 fans every weekend. You go to minor league baseball. You're traveling on buses. You're eating crummy food. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not chartering in, anymore You're either. not chartering, man. It's, it's a tough life in minor league baseball. Well, Juan will find that one back in on a play. Count holds a two and two to the Texas catcher. It was a tough road to get to the big leagues. I know a lot of fans who watch the game of baseball uh, I sometimes fail to realize how difficult a road it is. And uh, you come out of a, a big time college program where you're taken care of and, you know, just uh, eating great meals every day. It's, it's, a, it's quite a transition, I'll say it that way. And not only that, I think for kids that maybe 10 years ago would have gone the professional route out of high school, you know, now that they're at the collegiate level, they've got that year-round strength and conditioning coach. They're on the meal plan for the training table. They have so many resources to get better and stronger. And it's popped up. Second baseman Doty. Going to put it away two outs. But you're there with them 11, 12 months out of the year and not five or six as you would be in the minors. That's it. Yeah, it's an entirely different lifestyle for sure. And that's, uh, that is the case. Now, look, you've got programs like Texas, LSU. The other part of that deal is you've got the opportunity to go play for a College World Series and win a ring. You know, that's, uh, I think, a testament to what David Pierce and his staff have done here at Texas. They built that culture, that atmosphere where you know, you're going to have a shot to win every season you play. Yes. Jay Johnson is going to do the same thing. Uh, he's just feeling, you know, taking up for where Paul Maneri left off and building a tremendous program. Go back to the Skip Bertman days at LSU. And I had a chance to play for Skip on the 87, 88 USA teams. And you just knew there's just something special about these men. And when they come, they're making not only investment in the school, the baseball program, but they make an investment in young people's lives. Staley shoots one out to left field. That ball's off the bricks. Hit one of the pillar. And Staley's going to have a two-out double in the third inning. You know, a great swing by Murphy Staley. Catches the fastball up and in. You can see the missed target again by Ty Floyd. And so far, Brett, Texas taking advantage of just about every mistake that Ty Floyd's made today. I know Floyd was hoping to get a quick one, two, three inning, at least get back on track. And there will be some activity starting in the LSU bullpen as... Skyler Messenger bats. Maybe yeah. to put a cap on that thought, though, Pat, you talk about the opportunity to play for a trip to Omaha or to win a national championship. If you play well enough in these power conferences, especially schools like the ones we're watching today, you get to do so probably playing at home. In other words, someone's going to have to beat you in your stadium in a regional or someone's going to have to beat you in a super regional to keep you from getting to Nebraska. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're, you're seeing those dynastic type programs that uh, just typically host those regionals and supers every year teams like LSU and Texas and uh, it, it, you know you build that type of program and, and that's what happens you get the, the beautiful facilities we talked about you know you go into uh, to the, the, the box at uh, Baton Rouge and it's just a tremendous baseball facility there's absolutely no doubt the bomb in Arkansas right it's just tremendous yeah, bomb walker yeah. Old Miss Mississippi State they're all in the same the dish. darn division. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike Moore was texting with me earlier. He used to be in charge of college baseball at ESPN. I give him a lot of credit. He had the vision several years ago to start televising all 16 regions. Yeah. Because then, once you get on TV, then you're going to be on TV for the regionals, the Supers, for Omaha. And you start building that momentum towards college baseball's biggest stage. No doubt. And that's where the college game has really grown. You've got a lot more eyeballs on this college game and, and especially now you know, until you, you get some other forms of baseball this is it this is it. Thompson yep. makes the play and they're getting in so the Longhorns get the two out double but do not add to the lead two and a half complete for nothing Texas watch me watch me shine with every snap born to move fans to cheer and clap two different legs that's how I play one built from science to help me on the day. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long. You'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me roll. Just 
discover, explore. The forest is quiet, the river will roar. One slip by the fire is all it took, but they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars, that's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Marucci has teamed up with Shriners Children's to provide fans with a fully customized official College Classic Souvenir Bat. Fans who donate $100 or more receive that free bat from Marucci. And donations of $250 or more earn a free full-size bat engraved with their own name. So visit collegeclassic.org today to make a donation and receive your free Marucci baseball bat. 4-0 Texas as we go into the bottom of the third inning. We've got one of Shriners, Haitian ambassadors with us. It's catchy. And now she sang the national anthem again tonight. Pat, she knocked it out of the park. Oh, man, catchy. <laughs> I love when you sing. Oh, thank you. You have a beautiful <laughs> voice, and you did. You knocked it out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it was a pleasure. <laughs> You've been doing this for a number of years, though, right? Singing the national anthem and then joining us? Yep, yep, yep. It's been Every time it's been so fun. Every time it's been well-received, and I'm just always grateful to be here. And you got the big crowd tonight. Exactly. <laughs> Like, look at that. They look so good from up here. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You were an America's Got Talent finalist, but I also want to talk about your story. I know we've encouraged you to tell it before, but you were part of a devastating plane crash. Yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah, it was uh, 2000. And, this happened only in 2005. Yeah, I was uh, one of two survivors um, of a plane crash that took 107 lives oh. in Nigeria, my home country. And yeah, I'm just I'm lucky to be alive for sure. Pat, you think about that, two survivors. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know there's a reason why you're here. Yes, and, yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, we know that the, those types of incidents and, and tragedies, you can do so much from them, and you yeah. have, Catchy. Tell thank us you so what much. you've done with it. Oh, it's been so great. I mean, first of all, thank God for Shriners for coming into my life when they did, because they be they basically gave me back my independence. You know, by the time I got here, I couldn't walk, and when I was done with them, I was walking, I was doing way more than walking, you know, so um, through them I've met so many incredible people, that's how I'm doing this right now, you know, singing the anthem at these games, and uh, since then it's just been really a whirlwind, going back to school, going to America's Got Talent, honestly it's an honor to be able to use my platform to promote what Shriners does, so um, I'm always so happy to represent them. And there can't be any better ambassadors for Shriners than former patients, and, and I think that's where your story, your message, just your outlook on life, I think, is, is so inspiring. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. And I thank Shriners for giving me that, really. So what was it like to compete in America's Got Talent oh, to be upon that <laughs> stage? Uh, what does that even feel like? Nerve-wracking. That's what it, it is. It's yes. scary. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, one of my friends actually signed me up for the show without telling me. That's how really? I ended up there. Yeah. So she changed my life single-handedly, <laughs> you know? You <laughs> Different trajectory. Like that, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> we all need people like that in our lives, I think. <laughs> Yeah, it was scary. That story could have gone one of two ways. She could have said, listen, my, my friend signed me up. I can't believe she did that. <laughs> or it had a good ending. Yep. So apparently it did. So yes, I'll give you credit did. for that. A, huge, a great ending, honestly. So um, I'm grateful to her for taking the step I couldn't take. You know, I was too nervous to ever do that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I think. Well, obviously, that. she <laughs> knew the talent you had. Oh. And maybe she was just providing just that little bit of a push. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I definitely agree. <laughs> How is that a life-changing moment? Is it? Do you meet people you've never met before? Oh, yeah. Is there something about being recognized now when you're out and about? Honestly, it's just always very humbling when people, when I meet people who say that they watched the show, they saw me on the show. I mean, I just feel like that's what the show did. They gave me this platform and exposed me to the world in a much bigger way than I, that I ever would have been exposed to the yeah. world, you know? And I got to share my survivor story with the world in a way that can inspire people. So AGC, that's what they gave to me, is that platform to share this story of inspiration with everyone and to use my voice while doing it so 
I mean, it's always great when people recognize me, obviously. <laughs> because, yeah, it just feels nice. Trey Faltini can't make that play on DiGiacomo. He gave it a pretty good effort, but DiGiacomo gets the infield hit. And that you, we see our fundraising goal on our screen. It's at 40 percent. Collegeclassic.org. If you want to participate, I know you want to see that number grow. Oh, I have a oh feeling man. tonight it's going to keep rising. I hope quickly. so. I hope so. Shiners, Shiners deserves it. Well, Ketchum, you talk about the inspiration that you've received from friends, mm -hmm. and then now the inspiration you give to others. Uh, is that you feel like that's the most important role you have as an ambassador for Shriners? Oh, definitely. Being a, I want to be. My goal is to be a role model for specifically other burn survivors. I want them to see, quite literally with my life, that there is life to look forward yes. to after what we've gone no through. Yes. You know, they tell you that in the hospital all the time, you know, from nurses and doctors. It means something, but it means even more when you see it from a person who looks like they've been through what you've been through. And so I want to have that impact on those kids to let them know that there's still a lot of, like, it's not just going to be hospitals all your life. Right. You're going to have, you're going to get back into the world and you're going to live a good life, not just survive but thrive after what's happened to us so that's what I want to represent and so I'm really grateful whenever I get a chance to do that okay you have a beautiful heart you have a beautiful story <laughs> uh, it is inspirational Thank and you. Uh, you know we talk to the patients that, that spend time with these baseball teams they go to their schools and visit and these players walk away changed as well wow wow I can imagine that I mean it's really just inspiring all around you know and, and I'm, I'm just grateful to be a part of that kind of crowd you know, people that can inspire other people in any walk of life, whether it's baseball players or professors, anyone, anywhere. I want, I just love when people are able to use their stories to inspire other people. And I think that's really the main reason why I'm here in this earth. I think there's no doubt about it. As <laughs> Alex Malazzo bats, and he's going to line one towards the left. Kennedy's played a great outfield, and he'll continue. Another great catch. Wow. Kind of looks like he's been out here for 100 games. <laughs> We know he's been at Texas for a long time, and he just continues to make play after play in the outfield, and this one is spectacular. What a break on the ball and stealing the hit from Lazo, and it could have been the eruption of a big inning for the LSU Tigers. The Giacomo at first base was already headed towards second. Kennedy comes up big for the horns. I know, Ketchy, just to go back to your words, and I think they're worth repeating as Trey Morgan steps in. Tremendous young player for LSU. He said, not just survive, but thrive. Yep. And I think that's probably a message that these burn victims, it, it has to resonate with them. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's what I hope. I know that all the burn survivors that I've met, you know, um, after what they've been through, like, they are stronger for it, you know. Um, and that's really the goal, is to show people that no matter what life puts in our path and whatever happens to us, you know, because, you know, living here, you know, we're going to have bad experiences. It's just the part of being... It's a part of being alive, and I want people to know, you know, you can still, there's still life to the course even after all that. You know, don't give up in that dark place, you know. When you've been through something really bad, you deserve to see the light after that. So, you know, hold on, you know, and no, that's what I tremendous. want people to know. Yeah. Ketchy, how do you promote what you're doing? Do you, do you have a, a social media presence? Tell us what you're involved in. Yes, I do. So I'm on every social media platform. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram, just that's if you right. type in Ketchy, that's me with the blue check mark on all the platforms, Excellent. okay? Excellent. Yeah, so you can find me there. I have a book coming out March 29th. Is that right? Yes, ah. I do. It's called More Than My Scars, and uh, I hope it has the impact that I, that I wanted to have, you know, for people to learn of my story, but beyond that, I love it, be related, be uh, relatable, yeah. So so, All right, so tell me, more than the scars. More than my scars. More than your scars. Yes. Okay, so how did you bury the lead and not tell us about your book until there were two outs and two strikes in an inning? You're supposed to come flying out of the gates with the book yeah, and show them to the camera. You're so humble, I tell you. Well, I wrote more than the score a year ago, talking oh, about youth athletics and, you know, it's just really helping coaches and parents try to navigate this whole youth sports thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to cool. buy your book. Please. Thank you. You let me know what you think, too. More than my scars. You got it. Thank you. Here's the one-two to Morgan. That didn't miss by much. Yeah, good slider backdoor type. And not exactly right, but it didn't miss by much. There she is. Indeed, the patient ambassador catching 100-plus surgeries. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely over 100, 120. At some yeah. point, you stop counting, or do you? Oh yeah, I just stopped. Yeah. My mom, I know she kept count. I, I just, for me, it's just in and out of the 
theater, however many times you need to do it for me to get better, you just do what you gotta do, you know? You get a chance to take your story international as well. You talked about coming from Nigeria. Yep, yep. I've gone, so I've gone back to Nigeria, you know, where it all started, yes. you know, um, kind of a, for like a closure kind of feel, you oh, know, absolutely. to go back and, you know, be in that place again, get some closure, and also to inspire people back home. Yeah. Morgan hit by a pitch. So the inning will continue. The, the infield single by DiGiacomo and hit by pitch to Morgan. And, and we're of course, okay with that. We get to talk to you longer. <laughs> <laughs> it also gives LSU a chance with one big swing to tighten up this game. But uh, look at that kneecapping. Yeah. Not that far from the chalk. That's uh, taking one of the team right there. I think Morgan could have avoided that pitch, but he understands. He gets himself on base, and you give Dylan Cruz a shot with one swing. And you're right, Brett. This could change quickly. You talked about the core four of home run hitters that combined for 60 home runs last year. Where you throw in Morgan as one of the best bats to make it a quintet of tremendous hitters. Dylan Cruz last year with 18 home runs. The catcher, you're also a local, right? You live here yes, in the Houston area? Yes, I do. Yep, yep. Each town. Well, you become such a annual part of this tradition we call the Shriners Children's Classic. How many years do you think you've been coming in? Let me see. I think this is, I want to say, third or fourth. At least. At least third. Yeah, might be more <laughs> At than least now. third. Yeah. Two on, two out for Dylan Cruz. You have a rooting preference tonight? Be careful on this, but LSU, <laughs> Texas. I mean, you're going to make a lot of fans oh, immediately. Don't. However, look, you can't you put know. me on the spot like that. Okay, oh. I'm not, yep. not going to do. <laughs> may the best team win. You're, How about oh, there that? you go. Very yeah. neutral. How about that? She's selling books again right now. Right? <laughs> we went for the game. Yeah, we go. Exactly. We're here for the game. We want the good game. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's All the could be in the future. Maybe. <laughs> Diplomatic responses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cruz got fooled on that last one, though, Pat. He was reaching for that pitch. Yeah, the twist in Steven Slider has really tied him up. That's a look at determination on the face of Tristan Stevens. That's a competitor. Fans up on their feet, anticipating an end of this inning. Strike three call. Big pitch from Stevens, big inning from Ketchy. As always, thank you for your time. My pleasure. <laughs> Fans having a good time. We enjoyed our visit with Ketchy. A strikeout to end the frame. Thank you. In the last year, there was a victim of identity theft every three seconds. Could it happen to you? Somebody used my identification and they had actually purchased the car and drove it off the lot. I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats, and if there's a problem, we work to fix it. LifeLock provides the type of protection I need. Help protect what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Call right now. Big Moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. On we go to the fourth inning. Ty Floyd back to the bound. Texas with that four-run second. Looking to extend their lead. It'll be Faltini, Campbell, and Douglas Hodo the third. Maybe one of the biggest moments in this game is when LSU didn't want to pitch to Faltini, put him on before Dylan Campbell got the swinging bunt hit slash throwing air leading then to the three-run home. Yeah, no doubt. That's the uh, risk you take, right? You 
You put a guy on base and pitch the number nine man. Dylan Campbell comes through with the swing and bunt and, and the inning changes all in one swing with Hodo. Trey Faltini didn't get cheated on that swing. Oh, great job by Ty Floyd, the LSU starter. Of course, not how he planned it. Giving up four runs in the second, but testament to his perseverance, just going out there continuing the battle to keep his team in the game. That's what you expect from a senior leader, but Ty Floyd only a sophomore. One and one to Faltini. Do we get a comp from the truck on Faltini's frame of Eric Davis? Got to get those shoulders ah. just a little bigger, right? Oh, man. Not a, not a bad comparison, though. You're exactly right. Maybe about another 20 pounds on him. Yeah, holds the bat pretty similar. The slider just missed. Eric Davis could do some damage. Oh, my goodness. He was not a fun guy to face. <laughs> Bet not. You talk about a loose, whippy swing. He holds that bat upright. And the count has gone full. Also working hard behind the dish for the Tigers. And he's been a mainstay catcher for a few seasons here for LSU. And Coming in with a fastball. There it is. Yes, sir. Four strikeouts for Floyd. He hit a spot perfect. Yeah, 93 at the knees. He has not lost any velo. Ty Floyd continuing the battle. Here's Dylan Campbell. Swing and infield hit that went about 35 feet up the third base line in the second. Floyd picked it up with a bare hand, threw it away. And the wheels were in motion for a big inning. And those those plays, you, you appreciate as a coach the hustle, the aggressiveness. But you also have to play smart baseball. And that just wasn't a smart move to try to throw Campbell at first base. And those are the plays you learn from. I'm sure part of the frustration for a pitcher is you made the pitch you wanted. You got the soft contact. It just happens to be in a spot that might result in a hit, and you're angry, and yeah. you want to make a play and in the inning. That's exactly it. You feel like you should be rewarded for making that kind of pitch. That's the old frustration play. And sometimes the best plays of baseball are the ones that you don't play. Two balls and a strike to Campbell batting ninth. Elevated again. That's ball four. And Floyd really wanted that pitch. Looked like it was just below the zone. Marza does a great job of framing it up. Well, this was the swing pack from Douglas Hodo the third in the second off the back of the Crawford box. First home run of the season. So the walk on for Hodo and this Texas team I mentioned last year they led the nation in walks 379. Hit by a pitch an additional 74 times. That's why their on base percentage was nearly 400. <laughs> 394. That's pretty salty. No matter what level of baseball, that's salty. So you better feel the ball well behind him. I mean, you better not make mistakes or, yeah. you know, allow them to balloon in it. That's what this offense does. It just puts a lot of pressure on defenses. And, and you add the speed, especially the top of the lineup, and even more so. Floyd left another one up in the zone. Yeah, pitch count really starting to creep up here. Top of the fourth inning. Floyd already at 77 pitches, 40 strikes, 37 balls. And Malazzo is going to take another trip out. 
slow this game down a bit. I think LSU has at least one arm going in the pin. Had some activity off and on for a couple of innings. Clint Fagan on his way out, and it appears that uh, LSU has Samuel Dutton up and in throwing. Indeed, that's the case. Well, these Texas Longhorns this season have outscored their opposition, counting what they've done tonight, 83 to 12. Does that sound like a number one team in the land? <laughs> that's the makings of one for sure. And for crying out loud, this is their 11th game, so you've given up 12 runs. And they're looking for more here in the fourth. Maybe a knockout punch for Floyd. And the staff ERA. How about .072? No complaints. <laughs> right. That'll work. No complaints. Uh, that'll win you some championships. In the air to shout left. Dugas started back, but he has time to recover and come in. Put it away for the second out. Floyd well, trying to get through four innings. He'll face Eric Kennedy. He's walked and single. All right, so what's your guess, Brett? What do you think, attendance-wise? Well, pretty full on field level. Club level is uh, three, three quarters full. Huh? Pitch out, so to speak, throw down to second base. It's gonna be a tie. How about Thompson playing the bounce? Man. Great pickup by Jordan Thompson. How about that throw from Alex Malazzo? Tigers out of it. Ty Floyd keeps the horn scoreless. Four to nothing. They're coming to hit. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. Innovation transforms the world, turning the status quo upside down. Innovation created a healthcare system that not only improves the lives of veterans, it transforms the lives of healthcare professionals with unique opportunities to work with industry thought leaders while serving our nation's heroes. The Department of Veterans Affairs, where innovation ensures those who served our nation are served by the very best. See how a career at VA can transform your future. H-Town High School. Sports, the excitement, the emotion, the passion. Only on H-Town High School Sports with Todd Free. See it right here on AT&T Sportsnet. Six remarkable kids have each teamed up at participating university for the Shriners Children's College Classic Team Fundraising Challenge. All weekend long, teams will compete to see which fan base can raise the most money in support of Shriners Children's. Go online to collegeclassic.org to donate in honor of your favorite team today. If you were asking me for an attendance guest before we went to break, I think I've got one for you. How about 23,000? 23. Is that official or unofficial? No, that's just, that's just your guess. My best guess. All right. I'm going to go 25. Is this the prices, right? I'm yeah. taking the over. Okay. At least you didn't go 23,001. <laughs> KW leads off the bottom of the fourth inning. 
part of the lineup for the Tigers. And Pat, they have one infield single through three innings. You know, Tristan Stevens has been the story so far. Of course, you highlight this Texas pitching staff. Anytime you do, you look at the top three starters. You had Pete Hansen's great start last night. Handcuffed that tremendous Tennessee lineup. And tonight, Tristan Stevens duplicating and bettering that effort so far against this LSU Tiger powerhouse. So Pete Hansen, after last night, has now thrown 17 innings and given up one run. Tristan Stevens has now thrown 15 innings and not given up a run. Yeah, can I ask for much more than that? Hey, <laughs> tomorrow night you got Tanner Witt, who's been equally as good. Yeah, that's a weekend rotation that uh, can take a team a long way in the postseason. Next pitch to Doty. Oh, out of the that would hurt. Knocked him off his feet. That would hurt. I don't know if that caught foot or ankle. Well, he's going to try and walk this one off. Everybody's saying walk it off. I don't think that is possible. You know, Pat, going back to the conversation, though, about pitching, are you a believer in staff rhythm? In other words, one guy kind of sets the tone. The next guy says, well, I'm going to go out and try and equal or better that. And it just has a kind of a carryover effect. Oh, absolutely. Here's the uh, hit off of uh, Doty's foot, maybe ankle. Ah. Well, I, I, oh, man. Stevens just him up. Yeah. Take the ball off your foot, then go sit down. That's not very nice. No, I think, Brett, that to, you, you look at how you, you stack your rotation, and absolutely you play, you know, lefty, righty, lefty if you can, or, you know, but you look at how the arms match up, but you also have to look at roles. And once you've kind of settled on that Friday night starter, he's your Friday night guy. That's the expectation he has. And you put your faith and trust in the guys that you choose for the next two days. But it also goes down to... You know, you got a Friday night starter who can extend a game, who helps save your bullpen as well. Did that 30 to 13 ratio of strikes to balls work for you too? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, 44 pitches total, and Tristan Stevens, as we talked about, you know, when you say pitch to contact, you hear that said a lot of times. It's really hard to execute. But the goal there is to try to get a hitter out in three pitches or less. And Tristan Stevens has mastered the art of pitching to contact tonight. Missing in there. And when he misses, he doesn't miss by much. Two balls and a strike to Jacob Berry. He's playing third tonight. He's also been in the outfield. Talked about this young man and what he did last year at Arizona. Now D1 Baseball has him as the number one draft prospect for this upcoming draft out of the college ranks. And he's been in a, a bit of a slump lately. He's only hitting 317 coming in. No, no, the third won't get there. Barry has the base hit. <laughs> he turns to the dugout. Eh, uh, you know, I'll take it. So I've been hitting rockets to get caught. I'll just dump one in this time. Gonna get a little love yeah, every once in a while. And he is the top switch hitter in college baseball. And, and you talk about that number one ranking as far as major league scouting goes. Yeah, you won't find a better pure hitter for both sides of the plate. I mentioned his father Perry. Was drafted by the Astros, spent four years in their minor league system. Never made the major leagues, but played at Louisiana Lafayette. Jay Johnson likes his timeouts. He does. Conversation. This is the third time in the Shriners Classic he's used this strategy where he calls an offensive timeout, brings his players together. And part of that is the uh, psychological effect on you trying to slow the game down with the starting pitcher. Also a chance to get some instruction to his hitters. Yeah, it's not something you see uh, done very often in baseball Agreed. circles, but third time we've seen it from Jay Johnson. Does that bother a guy like Stevens? No, not at all. If anything, it just <laughs> it juices him up even more. 
And we didn't see the demeanor change on Stevens's face one bit. Jordan Thompson won the game yesterday with a walk-off homer. He was swinging for the boxes again. San Diego area native. And he generates a lot of bat speed. We saw it on display last night, but Jordan Thompson does not get cheated. Messenger gets the out of second. Maxwell ends up near the dugout. It was a hard slide by Barry, and it forced a wild throw from Daly. We well, sure did. And when we talk about the takeout slide, is really gone by the wayside with these rule changes in baseball. But if you can have a, a legal takeout slide, it's that slide right there. Jacob Barry going straight into the bag, and Mitchell Daly not, not able to get off the bag or make a strong throw. And good news for him. Silas Ardwan was in perfect position to back up. The throw and plays it perfectly off the carom. Coach Pierce wants an umpire review. Is he questioning the slide at second base? Yeah, the interference at second base. And second base umpire Michael Durantis signaled just an out, did not signal interference. I thought that Barry's slide was legal straight into the bag, and Daly just kind of tried to make the jump throw. And Barry was right there near the base when Daly was catching and trying to throw. And there's the clean pickup and throw by Messenger, and I think that's clean, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't see the interference there. And you're allowed to slide into the bag. Now the question is, did he slide through the bag? That might be what Pierce is arguing. Well, he didn't pop up. No, he sure didn't, but he, he slid through the bag. That could be called interference. I didn't see that, but we'll see. So if the play stands, Jordan Thompson will be at first base of the fielder's choice. The umpires rule interference. It'll be a double play. Glenn Fagan, our flight umpire, Michael Durantis, who had the call at second. Up there in the conversation. Let's see it again. Yeah, he's, he's the completion of the slide. slide. Yep. Early. I think that's 100% leak, Matt. I think so too. I think his foot stopped there on the bag. If anything, went to the top of the bag, but he didn't slide through it. And I'd be shocked if they overturned this one. Taking a long look at it, though, aren't they? Well, they are. And now we'll switch headsets. And probably worth a reminder when these teams have played together. It's been enough to make it an interesting series. All-time series. Texas leads 27-13 and one. Got to love the tie. Legal slide at second base. Well, in David Pierce's mind, you know you. You challenge a play like that, maybe knowing or not knowing if it was legal or not, but certainly worth the risk there. You had LSU trying to crank something up here in terms of a rally here in the fourth inning. Certainly the Tigers trying to take advantage of anything they can get here against this Texas pitching staff. Now it will be Braden Jobin. Line to right is only time in. Four home runs on the season. Bounces one to Daly. Nice big bounce. And the inning comes to an end, so the Tigers get a hit. Do not score. Four scoreless for Tristan Stevens for nothing Longhorns. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start. Leotard and tights. A story through movement under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. What 
asking what you waiting for. Give them what they came for. This is what they came for. Step up to the plate and join the official kids club of the Houston Astros. Presented by HEB. <laughs> Children 12 and under will receive four tickets to a select Astros game, a jersey, drawstring bag, a hat, and lanyard, as well as the opportunity to be selected for exclusive events during the year. All for only $30. You can become a Buddies member today by visiting astros.com slash buddies. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by AutoNation. America's largest and most admired automotive retailer. Beautiful Minute Maid Park. Jam-packed tonight through that lower bowl and even up into the second level, the club section. Even those luxury boxes are filled up tonight. There's quite a few. Yeah. Great college baseball fans. I think baseball fans just in general. Brett, when you think about... Uh, Completely agree, Pat. Yeah. Folks are hungry for the baseball season, and you get an 80-degree day in Houston, you get an atmosphere like this, even if you didn't think you were a college baseball fan, it would be worth you know, either flipping around to the television dial or showing up in the ballpark to watch. Oh, no doubt, man. You, if you're battling with the, the rodeo this week, uh, you, you've got a lot of choices here, but if you're, <laughs> if you're a baseball fan, this is the event. Had a large television audience around the country watching, and certainly the uh, fan bases from both Texas and LSU out in force tonight. Man. Got a thousand team youth tournament, a perfect game in the northern suburbs. The Houston Rodeo over at the Texan Stadium, which draws 70,000 tonight. Waiting for the attendance here tonight and over the course of this weekend. Zary Kennedy waves and misses. It's the place to be. H Town. Absolutely. Got to see my daughter play four softball games at George Ranch High School. I'm cramming it all in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the report on your son today, too. Walk off, hit by pitch. Yeah, well, here, right? you know, <laughs> do whatever you can. <laughs> Just wear it. There you go, man. And it's so fun to be uh, involved with your with your kids. Brett, I know that uh, you work the University of Arkansas games. You're traveling a lot. So when you get a chance to see your kids, you're going to be there. I am indeed. Videotape in every at bat from the side swing. Absolutely. <laughs> I did it all four years of college, and I still do it. My son's playing pro ball. I still do it. Understood. <laughs> that pitch is up now. That part of dad coach never goes away, man. <laughs> when they can understand your mannerisms from 200 feet away, when you can gesture and motion and do something, and they know exactly what you mean, you've probably been at it a while. Oh, man. Yep. 2-2 pitch upstairs. Well, not the player that Floyd wants to put on base. Kennedy has been there a couple of times and has advanced by a stolen base and a balk. But Kennedy's speed will sure put a pressure on some defense and, and a pitcher. But a few times I thought Floyd had his back to the wall as far as staying in games, only to find a way to get out of it. But the leadoff walk in the fifth will maybe accelerate some activity in the bullpen soon. Pitch count just under 90, as I say that. A couple of pitchers jump up. Ivan Melendez will head to the box. And if there's any chink in the armor with Ty Floyd so far early in this 22 season, it's been uh, the walks and sometimes a lack of command. And tonight, 86 pitches, 44 of those for strikes, 42 balls. Not a great strike-to-walk ratio, and Malazzo will again slow the game down allow his bullpen to get loose you may see a change here and it looks like that's what's going to happen Jason Kelly pitching coach for LSU out I think this will be the night for Ty Floyd eighty six pitches again for Floyd through four plus innings Cut of the bullpen has been made. So the Longhorns have their leadoff runner aboard in the fifth inning. We'll step aside and tell you about the new pitcher. We'll be back in a moment for nothing.
Welcome to Wendy's. May I take your breakfast order? The only thing Reggie Miller loves as much as Wendy's breakfast is March Madness. So he's watching the entire tournament here in his recliner. Not gonna lie, it's madness. I got you. You I don't work you. here. Breakfast Baconator for five-time All-Star player Reggie Miller. Hall of Famer. He didn't know that breakfast was half off in the app, so I schooled him. I'm coming back here every March. Every single... Yes, Tyler! Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Get half off the official breakfast of March Madness when you order in the Wendy's app. Here's to something new in 2022. It's the Rooms to Go anniversary sale. New looks, new styles, new possibilities, all at amazing sale prices. Here's to new ways to shop, new ways to save, Here's to something new for you. Whether you start online or in store, get creative, have fun, and do it all for less right now during the Rooms to Go anniversary sale. It's all you. No, I insist. It's your turn. No, nope, I think it's your turn. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Go. I appreciate your appreciation. It fills me. Safe drivers save money with farmers. Just for driving safely? It's a farmer's policy perk. Get farmers and you can get a safe driver discount simply for having a clean driving record for three years. Come on. After you. After you. Safety, Safety first. first. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. For Astros mini plans are the perfect way to watch the season with the flexibility you want. Catch the biggest matchups, collect every bobblehead, or start every weekend with Friday night fireworks. There's a mini plan for you. Visit astros.com slash ticket plans to find your tickets today. Keeping our fingers crossed for season soon. Meanwhile, LSU's gone to the bullpen. Yeah, I shot a Sam Dutton in See the uh, stats? Only his second appearance of the season. Has an inning under his belt, a couple of strikeouts. 5'11", 185-pound freshman from Southside, Alabama, Westbrook Christian High School. How about that? Get your second appearance of your collegiate career at Big Bay Ballpark. I think he's thrown about a complete game in the bullpen already. <laughs> Against the number one ranked Texas Longhorns. And yeah, he is warm. He's been loosened up for a couple of innings. And Jason Kelly wanted to get the most he could get out of his starter, Ty Floyd, but he will hand the ball off to Samuel Dutton. Here is Melendez. You mentioned he was drafted, I think, in the 16th round by the Marlins, but chose to come back. Play for these Longhorns again. Marlins drafted his ex-teammate, Zach Zubia, who was the first baseman for Texas last year, and Melendez taking over trying to fill the big shoes of Zubia. No doubt about Melendez's offensive prowess. It's really just uh, how could he handle the move to first base and defensively he's been good. Serve that right back to the screen. Thirteen homers a year ago for Melendez. 51 knocked in. You know, Jay Johnson talks about the strength of his pitching staff he feels is in the bullpen. That slider catches the top of the strike zone against Melendez. And I would imagine there's times, though, he's not going to see a lot to hit over the course of a weekend series. Especially if guys aren't on base in front of him. You know, David Pierce said that teams have so far early this season pitched around Melendez quite often. What you look to find is somebody behind him, like a Mitch Daly or a Silas Ardwan, he can provide some protection for him. Lifted back and out of play into the upper tank. Dutton, a four-pitch mix. You'll see the fastball 88 to 90. He'll touch 91 at times. Curve ball, slider, change up. Nobody out in this fifth inning. Clint Fagan's doing something, warning. Yeah, he gave him the, the time clock warning to Dutton. 
First one's free. The second one, Ken, has a ball. Now I've got to find where the clock is here in this ball. Melendez, an El Paso native, waiting in a 2-2 pitch from the reliever Dutton. Well, that shot up into the ceiling. Going to avoid all the rafters. And the catch is made by Thompson. Did a great job of tracking that ball. We talked about the roof being closed tonight. It uh, is playing a bit different than it did last night, for sure. It's a challenge for some of these players that never played in a covered stadium to try to track that baseball on the way up. What are they saying right there? That ball's moving a little bit. He was moving the hand back and forth. I bet it is. And a big first out for Dutton and the Tigers. And a much quicker kick from Dutton to home plate. We'll see if Kennedy tries to go at some point. Ty Floyd was about a 1-5-1-6 to home plate. That looks to be like a 1-3-1-4, so much easier on the catcher. We can get that ball home in under 1.4 seconds. Kennedy Bluff going. Might have been a pitch to handle for Milazzo on an elevated fastball. David Pierce with the armband and all of his offensive players wear the armbands as well. He flashes number signs from third base. You'll see the Texas hitters look down at the armband to get the play. How many of those number sequences do you think might just show up as NOT? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. <laughs> yeah, most of those flashes mean nothing. Swing on, hit it. Very tried. And a good fastball, 90 miles an hour down and away. Bailey swings through it. Big deep breath for Mitchell Daly. Playing a pitter on this Longhorn team and lineup. Uh oh. Had him leading. Kennedy was just about a no man's land. That's what you love a, for a pitcher, especially a freshman like Samuel Dutton. You, know, you got to vary your looks. You got to hold, do hold picks. Of course, quick moves, but nothing running is Kennedy. Running this time, and another one fouled away. to see young pitchers with the poise to do a great job in holding runners. Give your catcher a chance to help you. Two and two to Daly. Kennedy a couple of times has been off and running in the sequence. That uniform's pretty much covered in dirt now. Uniform and pants. Morgan looking for Allen. He's got it. I know Trey Morgan is left handed. And that might limit some of the positions he could play. I almost feel like he has the athleticism. He could probably do it just about anything in this time. <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, he's uh, obviously a large human, but uh, he moves so well. Yep, very athletic first baseman. And, you know, all you got to do is look down at the at the lineup and see a first baseman hitting leadoff. You really got to think, there's not many college first basemen hitting the one hole. <laughs> or any first baseman. Here's Ardoin. He doubled and scored in that four-run second inning. We need Douglas Hodo the third to be a first base held aboard by Trey Morgan the third.
Oh, okay, he's starting to extend that lead a bit. It's huge right yeah. now. He's creeping out a little further. I thought he might run in the pitch to our drawn, but it was taken for a strike and a curve. See our plate umpire Clint Fagan say get back in the box. To our drawn. Close again at first. Oh, Dutton doing a really good job of mixing up his looks. Keeping Kennedy close. He's making Kennedy work. He's got a sweat worked up over there. Look at that. I would say. <laughs> Lathered up, covered in dirt. At some point you just run because you want to <laughs> you want an outcome. We're going to have to dive back into first. Yeah. A nasty slider from Dutton. Yeah, another one rolled in. Yeah. Good slide step there. He's mixing up his moves to home as well. Quickly up in the count to hard one. O2 pitch. Threw him a couple of breaking balls for a strike and used the fastball then to see if he'd get a chase. Yeah, try to use that as a setup pitch and see if he doubles up the fastball or comes right back with the slider. That's a slider. There it is. Take that as a win. Yeah, Dutton and myself. Inning ends. Dutton did a nice job coming out of the bullpen. Keeping his Tigers down by four runs. We have an honorary teammate today. Her name is Alyssa. It's cool to have her. And Alyssa, we got you actually this jersey. So there you go. Shriners was really important for me because I found out I had scoliosis and I needed surgery. About a month later, we contacted the Shriners and they got me in for an appointment to have my surgery. She had had a growth spurt and all the growth basically came in curved. Her back started hurting. She was in pain all the time, she was tired, she had headaches. Um, so when we took her back for that next appointment, that's when they referred us to the specialist. You know, after learning a little bit about Shriners, you can just tell that they care about the people. You know, regardless of their ability to pay, they're there to be there for them. It's, it's awesome to know that they're out there they're doing, doing things like that. I think when you look at that teammate atmosphere, is really something that it seems like, that she kind of cherishes. And then to adopt her as a teammate with Texas and our baseball team is pretty cool. Shriners really does help everyone. Oh It's a jam-packed Minute Maid Park tonight to see the purple and yellow of LSU. A lot of burnt orange as well for the Texas Longhorns. Two great fan bases. These fans got here early trying to stake out their claim to some seats around this ballpark. All the runs came in that second inning when the Longhorns played at four. Three of those on a Douglas Hoda, the third homer. Tristan Stevens is Giving up just two singles. We'll face Dugas, the Giacomo, and Malazzo. How's that for some LSU names? In order, you have Joe Bear, Dugas, the Giacomo, and Malazzo. Alex Bregman joined us yesterday. Just had a great conversation when he popped in. He was talking about the year I got a chance to go over there and broadcast a regional from Baton Rouge and Houston ended up winning it. Todd Whitting's club went in there and won it. Bregman was a sophomore. Aaron Nola was a junior. Had LSU won that they would have lined up in a super with Texas. Instead Houston and Texas at that time had to bid for the super. You can imagine who won the bid. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Not a big guess there, right? No, you can guess who won. The long words did as Dugas swings and misses, but LSU was playing the early game on Friday, and Paul Maneri wanted to play the first game in case there's any weather. You get your game of the books and don't have the disruption. 
And I rolled into the box at, you know, 10 in the morning, and I mean, the parking lots are jam-packed, the critters are on the grill, and they're cooking it up, and they're enjoying life, and you thought, I don't think I want to leave. <laughs> I get much better than this. <laughs> I think I'd like to stay for a few days. That's a check swing. That's a strike. Meanwhile, Ardwan will chase. Dugas wasn't running, and the strikeout completed at first. Well, Dugas wanted to check, and Cliff Fagan gave it to him. Joe Harris signals a swing. Yeah, that's a, a swing. Isn't swing. It? That is a swing, yeah. Mark one uh, off his glove, made a quick pickup, and yeah, Dugas runs right as the call is made. He might have a shot there. That ball gets uh, skips all the way towards the dugout area of the Tigers, and you now Jay Johnson wants an explanation. And Dugas was pointing. I don't know if he thought maybe he foul tipped it. I don't think that was the case. No, I think he wanted to call uh, the, the check really quick, and then as Joe Harris signaled out, Dugas took took off, and by that time it was too late. Well, go down as a swing and strike against Dugas and one out in the inning. Here's to Giacomo getting the start in right. Picked up an infield single in the third inning. Spank to center. Should be playing. Hold on the third. They're waiting. Two outs. Well, how good has Tristan Stevens been so far against this mighty LSU lineup? Not only really giving up two hits here in four and two thirds innings. 57 pitches total, 40 strikes. That'll get you some wins. Pretty incredible ratio. Malazzo, the catcher, lined out to Kennedy and left. It's only time in. He looks at a breaking ball for strike one. And the slider has Malazzo rocking back. Well, what do you do if you're LSU at this point? You've got Tristan Stevens just rolling through your lineup. Yeah, you got to change your approach. The approach has obviously been just trying to get a good pitch to hit, but Tristan Stevens has not <laughs> made many mistakes tonight. No. You don't get good pitches to hit. Now you got to cut the plate in half or do something different in your approach, and that slide is just nasty. Catches the outside corner. Yeah, just like that, Tristan Stevens cuts through the bottom of this LSU lineup. Three up, three down for him in the fifth. And we'll go to the sixth inning. Warren's up. 4-0 over the Tigers. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Officially hoop season on AT&T Sportsnet. So let's ball, baby. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Kevin Porter Jr. Because this is our season. And it's always game time on AT&T Sportsnet. 
As we go to the sixth inning, it's a 4 nothing Texas lead, and we have a national patient ambassador, Seth, who's up here in the booth with us from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Welcome to Houston. Well, happy to be here. How are you guys doing? Oh, great. What's this weekend been like for you? It's been awesome. I've been going around, meeting lots of different people, lots of coaches out here, having a great time, giving the word out about Shriners. Pretty big week already. Sure has been. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, what's your main duty here with Shriners this weekend? Uh, we do a lot of different media things. I mean, we'll do like social media stuff or we'll give speeches, meet with donors, a lot of that different stuff, trying to get the word out and That's great. encourage other people to donate. So you truly are an ambassador. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. And you were a scoliosis patient, correct? Correct. So yeah. tell us your story. So in between fifth and sixth grade, my mom noticed that I had a little bit of a curvature in my back didn't look right so we went in to get it checked out and we realized yeah I've got scoliosis so I began treatment with a chiropractor and we worked on it for a couple weeks and months and it, it just wasn't working it was just slowing it down but so we knew we needed another alternative something something else and we luckily found Shriners and VBT and we made the right call now Seth tell us the, the progression of what happened after that what, where did you go to the hospital which hospital did you go to and Tell us kind of the process that took place after you went to Shriners. Right, so I met with them for an initial visit and they kind of screened me, look at what we need. So I went back out there for a couple weeks afterwards and we had the surgery. They got me up and walking within hours, a day, and I was on my feet, I was ready to go. After the surgery, I think six weeks later, I was playing baseball and I had a great season. Like How about that? Man. Six weeks, major back surgery. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. So the rehab went well, nonetheless, right? I mean, it's obviously you're back playing ball. So what's been the highlight of the weekend for you here? Oh, man. I like I like being out here when the national anthem's going on. It's really cool just standing with these players and hearing some great singers. I mean, Catchy singing the national anthem here. She nailed it. She was awesome. She did. How about that stretch yeah. from Trey Moore to the yeah, first base? Play. Incredible play. play on both ends. Jacob Berry with the backhand and a strong throw. And Trey Morgan just about doing the splits at first base. I think he did. I mean, he really stretched that thing out. How about that? At first, he's even checking himself out on the big board here at Minute Maid, and that's the athleticism you don't get with every first baseman. They're going to challenge this replay, and I'm not sure if they're wondering if maybe Morgan was off the base. Looks like he's on it to me, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's on the foot. Did the foot come back or get back on it? I think when he made the catch right there, his foot's on the bag. It does come off slightly. I think that's well after the catch has been made. That gives us more time with Seth. Now, you're talking about being a baseball player. Aren't you a golfer, too? I am a golfer, yeah. Ready to play in my high school season this year, and after I'm done here, I'll be headed to college and playing for my college team, too. Where's wow. that? University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne. Fantastic. Absolutely cool, man. So you go from having major back surgery to getting back on the baseball field six weeks later, and now a, a, a golfer. That's amazing. I mean, that's amazing recovery, amazing story. So what would you tell other kids having some issues like this, and what would you tell families who may need to hear more about Shriners? Yeah, get it checked out. I mean, Shriners can do a lot for you. Your scoliosis or not, they, they can help. And especially with scoliosis, they've got some new innovative stuff. And you see with me, like, I wouldn't have been able to play sports if it wasn't for Shriners. But now I can go and play in college. I'm, I'm hoping to play professionally after that, too. So it's, it, it's just giving me another opportunity. And I'm hoping that there's other kids out there, too, who could get another opportunity. No, I would agree. And we've seen this play a couple of times as we wait for the review to see if Morgan kept his foot in the bag. When you're a golfer, I would imagine a back issue is below average, mm -hmm. just as far as dealing with pain and trying to optimize your abilities on the course. Yeah, yeah, but like, like, thankfully, because of my surgery, I still have full rotation, and it doesn't bother me. I I can play and not worry about it, and it's that's the beauty of my surgery and the beauty of what Shriners has done for me. I'm so thankful for what they've done. Call this confirmed for an out, so that great play does... Uh, get overturned. So, have you had a chance to get out to the Shriners tournament, the golf tournament in Las Vegas? I have, yeah. That's, <laughs> That's got to be a lot of fun. It's a isn't dream it? come true, meeting all those different players. They were, there was a lot of them out there who were interested in my story and our stories sure. and getting to meet us, talk to us. It was great. Those guys were awesome. I was so happy to be out there. I think we heard some stories about John Rahm and a few other guys that really 
really kind of took to the uh, the event, the cause. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, John Rom. I met with uh, Harry Higgs too, and we had a cool little video. But I was doing an interview, kind of like this one, and he walked past me a day later, and he had recognized me, and that just it was really cool to me that he paid attention and he remembered me yeah. in my story and who I was along with my friend Connor he, he they talked a little bit after that it was really cool that a lot of those guys really get into that it's awesome and yeah, that's one of those things every year you got to raise your hand and say I'm, I'm ready I'll go out to Vegas oh, yeah. I'll go back <laughs> yeah I don't mind going out to Vegas <laughs> tremendous Trey Faltine to the batter with two outs here in the sixth inning all right, so what's in the future? Obviously, you're playing college golf. What else? Uh, what, what are you studying? I'm going to study business. Hopefully, Excellent. after uh, after college, I can make golf and business one and the same. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I studied business as well. I figured if I was good enough for baseball to make it, I better be good with my money. Right. So <laughs> I, I, I thought, you know, I've got to think ahead, right? Plan B. And if it doesn't, baseball doesn't work out, I've got uh, maybe something else to go into. Exactly. That's yeah. that's awesome. And that's what, kind of what I'm hoping too. You know, if it doesn't if it doesn't work out, business is a great opportunity. You know, I, there's a lot you can do with that. Faltini will hit a little soft pop up out in the right center and. Cody's there to make the catch to end the inning. Seth, thank, thanks so much for stopping by, sharing your story, and best wishes for right, further thanks success. For having me out here. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. Watch me roam, discover, explore. I feel pretty. I must be a star. They helped me come a long way. I'll show you how far. Watch me. For 100 years, we've watched in awe as our commitment to transformative care continues to bring positive change to kids everywhere. Today, our brand is evolving too. Shriners Children's, the most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Here I stand on my own two feet. Jump shot intact, here to compete. Skilled hands were there to mend the bone. From loving halls that brought me home, my world stopped with a drive through the lane. Now give me the ball. You'll remember my name. Watch me. Orthopedic excellence at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. What if you could use retirement accounts to invest in crypto? With iTrust Capital, you can. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in your favorite crypto assets 24-7 with the tax benefits of an IRA. So instead of paying taxes on your crypto gains every year, you can defer taxes till you retire using an iTrust IRA. Or with an iTrust Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement because you're in this for the long haul. Start investing today at itrustcapital.com. Pat, one of the stories tonight has to be the performance from Tristan Stevens, the Texas starter. Now, no doubt, he's been absolutely terrific tonight, and you know, just a mix of pitches, the nasty slider. LSU hitters not seeing that pitch all night. And he has tied this lineup up, and that is not an easy thing to accomplish. He's back to work in the bottom of the sixth inning. He's given up two singles. One of those of the infield variety. You know, five strikeouts, and most importantly, only one freebie the hit batter, Trey Morgan, back in the third inning. So he has made LSU earn every inch. And they haven't had many. And this is Morgan to lead things off. True pure hitter. 0 for 1 today. Trey Johnson said about Trey, he's not going to spend a lot of time in the minor league baseball. Just a line drive. Machine, great plate discipline. Hit 357 a year ago. And the count of all in a strike. Well, what you love with players like Trey Morgan is you see a young guy who has a really good idea how to play the game. His approach is tremendous. Works hard at his craft. He has an absolute passion for the game. And as you talked about, the athleticism he has at first base and easily projectable as, a, as an outfielder. And you're right, being left-handed does limit him in some positions, but uh, can certainly play outfield, first base. But it's uh, his swing that's going to get him to the next level. And maybe for many years. It's a success story from the MLB. Breakthrough series. 
prior to entering college. Something I've been part of with MLB with the RBI World Series. They hold at the former Dodger Town, now the Jackie Robinson Training Complex. Part of MLB's initiative. In the air to right. Campbell back. Does he have room? Yes, he does. One out. Boy, Morgan just missed that pitch. Just a tad underneath it. Stay back on that breaking ball down in the zone. That's the pitch that has been so effective for Tristan Stevens tonight. And Morgan just misses the home run by a few feet. Taylor Cruz is 0 for 2. Tristan Stevens just such easy, repeatable mechanics. Just no wasted motion. Oh, pitches virtually out of the stretch position every time. And something that uh, Stevens has grown very accustomed to and very comfortable with. And we talk about not the overpowering fastball. His fastball's upper 80s. Maybe in the low 90s on occasion, but it's that slider and that incredible command. And the base hit in the center by Cruz. 18th base hit of the season. For the LSU center fielder. And one of the few misses that Stevens has had. The ball drifted back over the plate. It's enough for Cruz to get through the baseball. And nice job of trying to go right back up the box. That's the approach. You want these Tigers to have offensively. Try to stay behind the baseball. Going to take Stevens right back up the middle. Kay Doty had the flair for the dramatic yesterday. Game tying over in the eighth. Game tying double in the tenth. Miller Shue is waiting for that ignite button, trying to step on it or push it right now to find some <laughs> of that again. That is it. He's going to turn the fan on. Now well, Stevens with only 72 pitches so far. Here in the bottom of the sixth. He gets through this inning with under 85. It's expected to come back out for the seventh. Tristan Stevens has done all night. Hitter looking for something to drive or maybe a pitch that'll catch too much of the plate, and all of a sudden it's on the corner, called strike. Yeah, it's a 2 1 fastball. He's done it every, just about every time he's got behind the count. He'll just throw that outside fastball. He just dots the glove of Silas Ardwan. And you know, you're around the plate all night. You may get that ball that's a, a pitch called. It's a ball, maybe one or two balls out outside the plate. It's been a very consistent strike zone from Clint Fagan. And, I would agree. Problem has just been Tristan Stevens making pitch after pitch. I think the strike zone has been equal to this game tonight. It hasn't been giving too much off the corner that might change the complexion. Chopper into the hole. Messenger throws glove at it and it kicks away. And all of a sudden the Tigers with a couple of singles. Then business maybe here in the sixth bit. It looked like it was going to be ball four, but Hey, Doty goes after it. Would Faltini have had a play if he I was going to say, if, if Messenger lets that ball go, but that's a communication deal between he and Faltini, and if Faltini is calling it, Messenger should let it go, but uh, that probably would have been the, the best chance that the Horns would have had would have tried to get Dylan Cruz at second base. One of the best power hitters in college baseball steps in in Jacob Berry. It's at four this year. And all of a sudden, this LSU fan base quiet for a few innings. Have a reason to make a little bit of noise. Left it in the air. Left center, not deep enough. Kennedy there will make the catch. Cruz will tag. They'll move up to third. There's runners on the corners, but now with two outs. Now 
Yeah, Barry gave it a ride, and again, just underneath that pitch. A couple of times this inning, Trey Morgan just misses a home run there, and Barry gives that pitch a ride to left center. Well, Jordan Thompson, can he do it two nights in a row? Man. Tiger Faithful need him to. Crowd starting to get into it here. The purple and gold. At least giving something to cheer about with their first runner at third base. Stevens nearing the 80 pitch mark as he tries to get through six score to sit Team scored four runs for him in the second. That's it. Runners on the corners here. There's that pitch again. Just sweeping towards the yeah. outside corner. It's just like a frisbee coming in there. Starts off in the inner part of the plate, breaks across to the outside part of the plate. Just a hard pitch to stay on if you're a right handed hitter. I'll tell you, Tristan Stevens' stuff has not changed at all since the first inning. Do the hitters just give up on that pitch in a sense either because there's so much movement or they feel like it's going to drift so far off the plate that they can't hit it? I think that's the read as you see spin. If you see that pitch maybe middle in or middle of the plate, you think it's going to end up outside off the plate. You just tend to give up on it. Well, now it's three and one to Thompson. Joe Bear on deck. And if you're Tristan Stevens, you have to absolutely go after Thompson here. You don't want to put the tie on the plate. You know the power that Joe Barra brings. LSU fans on their feet. They want a big swing. <laughs> more fans on their feet. Looking for that third out. Groans and cheers as the count now has gone full. Yeah, good take by Jordan Johnson, though. That pitch was nasty. His fastball dots the outside corner. If you're Thompson, you've got to be thinking about taking this ball back up the middle, maybe even a right center approach. You've got to believe that Stevens is not going to come inside with a fastball. Got to be looking for something out over the plate. Cody will run with the pitch. Here's the payoff. Look at the emotion from Tristan Stevens and the Texas Longhorns. Gotta love college baseball. Quintero. <laughs> wow, with the crowd, it's Darwin, it's Darwin! Today, here at LSU and Alex Box Stadium, we welcome Hayes as a member of our program. It was awesome to have him around, uh, meet our players. He brought a lot of joy to a lot of people today, and we're fired up to have him as a member of our program now. So we found out at my um, 38 weeks in utero that he was coming without a leg. So we had about two weeks to prepare we have a family member, and he's a Shriner. So we knew of, you know, we knew about Shriners, and, but I wasn't familiar with what the hospital did. And so when we found out about Hayes, he said, you need to go to Shriners. They will tell you exactly what you need to do. Like the jersey. You know, we've established some really great relationships with the staff there because we've been going for seven years. I've met a lot of people from Shriners. They told me a lot of good stuff. I loved it. I just really liked it a lot. I was amazed at how, how bright and how excited he was just to be here and the smile he had on his face was unbelievable. He's obviously a part of the baseball team now. He's one of us. I got to play with one of the baseball players. It's an honor to be here and I just like it so much. I just want everyone to know that I'm a regular kid. Go The Shriners Children's College Classic is a tradition that unites athletic excellence and the most amazing care anywhere. Shriners Children's is dedicated to improving the lives of children with orthopedic conditions, burns, spinal cord injuries, and cleft lip and comments. All care is provided regardless of the family's ability to pay. So to learn more, visit ShrinersChildrens.org today. 
game six of nine this weekend. This is the one that a lot of fans circled on their calendars for good reason. Haven't heard a crowd just yet, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to relay that at some point. As Dylan Campbell leads off the seventh inning. He's walked, reached on an infield single, and scored a run. He was part of that four-run second that is the difference in this game. You know, could very well come back down to the back end of the bullpen for both these teams. And we saw Aaron Nixon for a couple of innings last night, Brad. I think that's the question mark for Texas. Agreed. Who will they finish the game with? Will it be Nixon? Or is he uh, spent for the night? It's hard to know, and I think the house money that I was uh, hearing today would be that he could possibly be available if needed for a few batters or an inning, but uh, he threw just enough last night to make that a question mark. Yeah, he sure did. At 40 pitches worth. Two strikes from Dutton to Campbell. And that's buried in the dirt. Now Samuel Dutton's done an excellent job coming in out of the bullpen last couple of innings here, not allowing Texas much of anything. Off the corner. Dutton is really kind of nibbling a bit here with Campbell. Yeah, he really is. He's just missed uh, down and away with that breaking pitch. With that slurve type action to it. Off the hands, fouled back to the screen. And he wants to get Campbell out with that breaking ball, but not able to control it. Dutton has retired all six that he's faced. Updating, he's just retired all seven he's faced. Now, second strike out of the night for Samuel Dutton, and this time stays hard. Goes to the outside corner. And Campbell swings right through it. Campbell forgot which dugout he was headed for. He started walking towards the purple, and then he had to do a U-turn. Well, Douglas Soto III had the big swing. Texas took the one nothing lead in the second inning. Patty launched one of the Crawford boxes, and he knew it from the minute it left his back. Oh, man. He was a pitch down and in from Ty Floyd, and he just dropped the bat head and just connected with it. I'm willing to bet now David Pierce has said after... That fly out in the fourth. Hey, Douglas, remember, you're, you're not the home run hitter. We need you to just to hit singles and get on base and make <laughs> things happen. <laughs> They'll start hitting off that backside. <laughs> There's guys who have hit home runs that have heard that story for 100 years, right? Hey, I know you hit one, but don't think that you're a power hitter now. That's I right. Mean, just stay up the middle, hit line drives. Don't try and do too much. and won the count to Douglas Hodo the third. It's right down the middle. A yeah, good fastball down the knees. Well, second hit in the road. Dutton's falling behind. But he's making good pitches when he has to. Seventh inning. Spoiled again. A couple of good breaking pitches from Dutton. You know, able to get a piece of it, keep the app bat alive, and staying back pretty good on that breaking ball. Let's see if Dutton comes back with the fastball here. Our Texas ball man, rather than ball boys, lost about five pounds. He's been <laughs> racing back this busy game, night. Yeah. All half inning long. And that is. 
for four. Just did miss. So Douglas Hoda the third will trot down and stand next to John Edward Trey Morgan the third. That's Battle of the third. Right? <laughs> <laughs> These guys have a lot to talk about. They may not even realize it. This is about the time of the game when David Pierce may be playing for one run. We'll see if uh, Kennedy shows bunt, but before that, Jason Kelly out of the LSU dugout. Have a chat with his reliever, Samuel Dutton. Dutton retired seven in a row before that walk. Looks like Trent Fittmeyer in the song last night. Bullpen sure did. He threw the ball well, too. Clint Fagan out to bust this party up and see what Jason Kelly wants to do. He's going to stick with Dutton. And just a chance for Kelly and Tiger to set their defense. Just in case Eric Kennedy does show bunt, how does LSU want to play it? Got our attendance answer. Pat, are you ready? I know you're seated, so I think you're ready. Did I, think I win? You can handle it. Did I win? You won. I'm gonna give it after this pitch. Harry Kennedy. That means he'll put it in play. Oh, no, it gives me time. 24,787. How about that? What the crowd here at Minute Maid for college baseball. I mean, we couldn't get to 25. We couldn't go outside and find. <laughs> <laughs> Under the ground, round it up, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, pass ball. Arched by Malazzo. Yeah, not sure if they got crossed up, but Malazzo's reaction to the ball tells me that uh, they were not on the same page. I think Malazzo would expect a breaking ball and get the fastball. Fastball, of course. That thing did have some movement, though. Oh, it, it did. It <laughs> took off, but I don't think Malazzo was expecting it. And now Texas gets Hodo in scoring position, so he'll let Eric Kendry swing it. Rip to right. The Giacomo hauls it in. Wow. What an effort. Ball gets away. The right shot on right field. Hodo's going to try and score. He dies. Hodo scores from second on the line out. Wow, and the air. Man, what a turn of events. Incredible catch over the shoulder by the Giacomo in right field. The throw coming back to the infield gets away from K. Doty and the first base throw. Yeah, just mishandled the throw. It looked like it was a pretty de decent throw from right field. And Odo comes all around, around from second base and a tag up to score the fifth Longhorn run. I think it's going to go down as an E4. What are your thoughts here, Brett? Going to have to see that one again. I thought the throw by DiGiacomo was right on the money, and Doty, I believe, just took his well, eye off the case and looked it up. Makes it an easy E4. Yeah. A costly extra base. Melendez hits one on the right field side, not a play. But Hodo doesn't score if he's not running hard to third base and take it a peek. So you see the distance to Giacomo had to cover. Yeah, just incredible catch. Yeah, easy tag up for Hodo, and then after that ball gets away from Doty, Hodo scores easily. Very good. 
feet tangled just a bit. And the ball's by him for the warning track, and Melendez will cruise to second base. I think Barry may have caught a cleat or started to stumble, and he just couldn't extend and get to that baseball. Yeah, not quite sure what happened with his footwork there, but yeah, it just looked kind of odd. I think you're right. He just got tangled up on his footwork. And the ball that he typically knocks down and makes a play on, and Melendez is going to wind up at second base with a double. <laughs> It almost happened in somewhat slow motion. Yeah, I'm not sure if Barry just misjudged the ball. It was it was hit hard, but kind of off the end of Melendez's bat. And I think maybe he misjudged the, the ball off his bat. I think that's going to be it here for Dutton. Jay Johnson out of the dugout. That'll mean a pitching change for LSU upcoming. So Texas has been able to extend its lead. Here in the seventh inning. This is the play by Barry. Watch him go to his left. Right here, he's already kind of falling down. It just didn't look natural. We're going to stay here. And I was mentioning the attendance tonight. Again, we had 24,787. In case you're curious what the College World Series record is. Probably no surprise, Pat, it involved these LSU Tigers in 2015 when they had 28,846. 28,840. I mean, they must be sitting on top of each other's shoulders out there <laughs> in those bleachers in left field. Counting people floating down the river, too, at that stadium. Probably safe to say this is a top 10 attendance in all time of college baseball. It would be safe to say. I think outside of the College World Series, it would take an unusual event and maybe playing at the Superdome in New Orleans or something completely out of character. I know they held uh, some games in some big league venues before, but uh, this was one of those with these two fan bases on this night we knew it was going to be pretty spectacular. You got the mingling right there, the Texas and LSU fans <laughs> as well. Everybody's playing nice, trying to get along. It's, a, it's, it's too early in the season to get too excited <laughs> yet, right? Yep. But uh, what a crowd here. Uh, a lot of purple and gold, certainly a lot of burnt orange. Both teams well represented. And I get to see uh, Trent Pittmeyer for the second night in a row for these LSU Tigers. He was leading the pregame speech, giving a little motivation to his teammates before the game tonight. One of those senior leaders for Jay Johnson, not only for the pitching staff, but for the entire team. Hit fire on in relief. Featured a high 80s, low 90s fastball last night. Sure we'll see something like that velocity tonight, but the sharp slider is his out pitch. Texas has added a run this inning. They had a four-run second. Tacked on a run in the seventh. We saw it last night. LSU found some magic in their bats late, but Tristan Stevens has been dominant at times, and the Tigers desperately trying to keep this deficit from growing any further. It'll be the cleanup hitter, Mitchell Daly. Just six hits for the Longhorns tonight, but they maximized them to the tune of five runs. Well, Vittmeyer for the season, making his third appearance. Last night, gave up a hit and a walk, two strikeouts in his inning of work. Only threw 13 pitches in yesterday's contest versus OU. There's that slider. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure if it's the beard or the way he holds his glove up under his chin when he gets ready to come set. He's got a little Doolittle in it. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Tell me that doesn't look like Doolittle. He can chew on that for a few minutes if he wanted to. <laughs> well, oh, place for a strike. Yeah. Back to back, same spot.
Melendez got the double. He's at second with two outs. Outfield shifted way around towards right against Mitchell Daly. And a wave and a miss. We'll end the inning. Longhorns get a big insurance run, however. Stretch time at Minute Maid. It's a 5 0 Texas advantage. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego, I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Yeah, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Each week, he takes you around the world for unlimited access to legends. You have done your research. And future legends. You are the first person I chose this. In Depth with Graham Bensinger. Now we're going to take a look back at yesterday's action at the Shriners Children's College Classic. Scoreboard brought to you by Perfect Game. Baylor a one-run winner yesterday in the early game, and LSU had the four-and-a-half-hour 11-inning game and the walk-off homer. And Texas had the 7-2 win over Tennessee in the nightcap. Thanks to Perfect Game for their sponsorship. As I mentioned, also a 1,000-team tournament going on in the northern suburbs this week. They're Super NIT, so this is the place to be for amateur and college baseball this week. Of course, Don't it is most it. of the year, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're just making it a big time this week for baseball. Yeah, but especially this weekend. And, uh, Oklahoma taking it on the chin to UCLA earlier today. That was the first game, 15 to 3. They were losers to Tennessee in the mid afternoon game today, 10 to 5. Here's Joe Bear, and he looks at strike one from Tristan Stevens. Now the Big 12 trying to get their lone win of the, of the night. I think we really enjoy in this college classic as the SEC Big 12 tight matchups. And you throw UCLA in, which is a nice ad to bring a team from the West Coast. You know, it really has been. We've, uh, we've had some traditional great matchups here, Brett. And you think a couple of seasons ago when it was an all Big 12, all SEC matchup and you know, drew some pretty good crowds that weekend. Including these two teams. In fact, they last met back in 2020 and LSU won that game 4-3. to three. They weren't facing Tristan Stevens. <laughs> they sure weren't. <laughs> There's a backdoor breaking ball just misses down in the zone. How do you hit that? Or do you? How do you hit that one? You don't. I mean, you see that pitch a foot outside <laughs> until it's a strike. <laughs> Right, you don't get paid to hit that pitch. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> it was sort of a rhetorical question, but I, I appreciate the answer as Joe Bear Case. Yeah, here comes the slider for the strikeout. And Braden Joe Bear showing his frustration. Been a long night for these Tiger hitters so far. Yeah, but I remember my son came to me a few years ago and said, Dad, I need to learn how to hit the slider. I'm like, Son, they don't pay you to hit the slider. You, don't, you, don't hit, the you slider. hit the fastball. <laughs> you hit the bad sliders and maybe the good fastball. That's right. Maybe the hanging slider, but uh, <laughs> you're not going to make any money hitting sliders, son. <laughs> Dugas is going to be lifted for a pinch hitter. Josh Pearson, the bat. Pearson pinch hit yesterday in the seventh inning.
sends that one out of play in the club level, which is well populated tonight. That's why we were able to put nearly 25,000 in here, just expanding to the second level around Minute Maid. Strike two. You know, stage of the game when Jay Johnson's trying to play a little bit of matchup baseball here and giving Pierce a shot. Gavin Dugas just did not have very many good swings off of Stevens tonight. Not many Tigers have for that matter, but trying to get something going with this, this left-hander Pearson. Here's the one-two. They got him. Oh, that's a free base runner. One of the few that's gotten away from Stevens on his 91st pitch of the night. Yeah, no walks, but uh, second hit batter for Stevens. Almost an identical pitch to hit Trey Morgan back in the third inning, and this one just clips Pierce on the back knee. Mm. So to bring up Giovanni DiGiacomo. It's an infield single, one of the four Tiger singles in the game. Kennedy. Just very comfortable in this tough left field in this ballpark, making plays tonight and doing it with relative ease. Two outs. Yeah, we talked to Alex Bregman last night about how you negotiate this outfield at Minute Maid Park, and I love what he said. He said the Astros typically have their left fielder playing just on the other side of the Crawford seat, so you can see the angle of the ball coming towards the seats where you're either going to play it off the carom or you get to the gap where possibly you can make a catch in that left center bullpen area. Carlos Lee used to play with his back up against the crop. Box. That's exactly right. <laughs> because he knew <laughs> everything was in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Josh Stevenson. A hit here. Had three at bats on the season. It's a five nothing Texas advantage. Longhorns trying to go to 11 and 0. Preseason number one team, coming off their third place finish last year in Omaha, losing two one-run games to the eventual national champion Mississippi State. Yeah, how about that? 95 pitches. Now the question is going to become if. Stevens works himself out of this inning under 100. Do you send it back out with the shutout going against LSU? That's going to be the decision David Pierce has to make. I think my answer would be no, but I'll be curious to see what Coach Pierce's answer would be. I think it's a pretty young season here, only the third start for Stevens. Always the, the health of these pitchers is the priority for these coaches. and You want to build arm strength, but you also want to protect that arm. And, at the same time, you're going to have Tristan Stevens trying to stay in this game. Get that shot out. That might answer it as well. He'll have to extend a little further on the base hit from John Stevenson. We'll turn this lineup over for Trey Morgan. Well, this is why the coaches get paid all those big bucks, right? <laughs> bottom of the seventh inning. Look at a hitting Morgan coming up to hit for the Tigers. And Tristan Stevens has had success against him. A couple of flyouts. And we're going to get a visit. By Texas pitching coach Sean Allen. Yeah, I think this is one of those visits about how do you feel? What are we going to do if you want to stay in this game? How do we approach Morgan? Morgan just missed the home run in his last at bat. When you think about what Morgan did yesterday, Pat, he went 0 for 3 in his first three at bats. And when he goes three hitless at bats in a row, you wonder what's wrong because he's just that consistent. Then yeah. he gets a big double in the eighth. And scored on the home run to tie the game. Got the huge double in the tenth. Scored the tying run again. Well, it's uh, a little bit of anxiety as well because it's a fourth time run the lineup. And the hitters are really starting to kind of get the timing down on Tristan Stevens' pitches. And so if you're old school, you say, man, this guy's earned it. He's earned the chance to get himself out of this inning. Well, the perspective would be, hey, fourth time around, I don't like the matchup against the left hander. See if Morgan can change the trajectory of this game. Let's give the Tigers a little more hope. Yeah, laying off that tough slider first pitch is a key, too. You get what that advantage count. 
Pat, when he flew out in the sixth inning, he got under a pitch and still drove it out to the one and call oh, man. Oh. And he hit a mile high, too. Certainly didn't miss it by much. And that's not the pitch you want, though, if you're Trey Morgan. You want that pitch up in the zone. Stevens lives on that bottom of the strike zone. This will be pitch number 100. Tristan Stevens about to flip that odometer over to triple digits. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Morgan. Softly hit. Bailey to his left. The scoop and throw and the inning ends. The strong outing of Tristan Stevens continues. Seven scoreless innings. 5-0 UT. With Home Chef, you're home free when you're craving a home-cooked meal. Our oven-ready meal kits are easy to make and even easier to love. When it comes to making dinner, fill in the blanks with Home Chef. Delicious? Meat simple. Get 10 free meals when you sign up at homechef.com. In the last year, there was a victim of identity theft every three seconds. Could it happen to you? Somebody used my identification and they had actually purchased the car and drove it off the lot. I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had LifeLock. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats, and if there's a problem, we work to fix it. LifeLock provides the type of protection I need. Help protect what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Call right now. Big moments. The best fans. Feel the excitement and don't miss a moment. Astros 2022 season tickets are on sale now. Astros.com slash season tickets. Coverage of the Shriners Children's College Classic is brought to you by Visit Las Vegas. What happens here only happens here. Well, Tristan Stevens probably done for the night, and there's a lot of handshakes and high fives for his seven scoreless innings against this vaunted wow. Fighting Tigers offense. And how about that night for Stevens? You know, come in to a game like this, big atmosphere, big league ballpark, facing highly ranked LSU Tigers, maybe one of the better offensive teams in the country. And you throw up blanks for seven innings, and uh, yeah, you deserve a few hugs in that dugout, but what a night for Tristan Stevens. He comes in this game not allowing an earned run in two starts. Well, now he has not allowed an earned run in three starts. Let's say it's continued. Ardoin doubled and scored in that four-run second. Of course, Ardoin is a Louisiana native. And I would imagine games such as this may be just a little more meaningful to Silas than some of the others. Oh, I would think so. Surrounded by Tigers your whole life. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hit well to center. Not deep enough. Who's back there to make the catch? By the way, Stevenson stayed in to play left field. As Murphy Staley comes to the plate, one for three, facing Wittmeyer. Well placed for a strike. Yeah, good slider. That's been his out pitch, Fittmeyer, and uses a slider to set the fastball.
LSU used seven pitchers yesterday in that 11 inning game. Staley turns on it, lifts it to left, back to the Crawford boxes. Goodbye! He just snuck it over. First home run of the year for Staley. And the Longhorns have been a pair tonight into the Crawford boxes. Man, why? How did Murphy Staley get his hands to this fastball? Watch where this pitch is starting to end up. Turn and burn his belt. <laughs> he gets the bat head out. And that is a Crawford box home run. Hits the first row of the seats. But that is called taking advantage of what the ballpark gives you. Murphy Staley with the, yet another insurance run for the Longhorns now. Boost the lead up to six. Fan in the front row had a play on that one. Skyler Messenger takes a strike. I mean, off his bat, but I'm thinking that's a fly ball in left field. That ball had plenty of carry, but golly, that ball was going to end up well inside off the plate. I thought so, too. Staley somehow got his hands through it. Did Messenger swing? He did not. Says Joe Harris. And who's going to argue with Joe Harris? <laughs> <laughs> That's a mountain of a man at first base. A fly out and a homer here in the Texas eighth inning. Messenger looked like he was way out in front of that one. Yeah, not seeing the slider from Bittmeyer. And, and that's his out pitch. It's, it's a tough pitch. Really tight spin. Here's the one, two. Buried that pitch. <laughs> Messenger one for seven so far with an RBI single in the college classic. Watch this. This count now go full. New battery mate for Bittmeyer as well. That's Hayden Travinsky taking over for Malazzo behind the dish. And a wave and a miss. And there's two gone. And Trey Faltini will be the next man in. Longhorn six runs on seven hits. Four of their six have scored on long balls. So for a team that maybe doesn't hit as many you would think as the LSU Fighting Tigers, been a couple of blasts today by the Horns that have provided the bulk of their score. And yeah, we talked about the lack of power before the game. Well, that power show is starting to turn on here for the Longhorns. Now take that, talking yeah, heads. That's right. <laughs> make that Tyler McManus take it over behind the dish for Malazzo. Two strike pitch is going to be served in the air and out of play down the right field line. Longhorns have added some insurance already in this eighth. That's strike three. So Bittmeyer gets out of the frame. Murphy Staley added a solo home run. 6 0. Longhorns. Watch me. Watch me shine with every snap. Born to move fans, to cheer and clap. Two different legs. 
That's how I play. One built from science to help me on the deck. Between these lines, I'm all heart and muscle. Don't stare too long. You'll miss the hustle. Watch me. Pioneers in prosthetic technology at Schreiner's Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. No matter who you are, and actually no matter what the year of car you, you're driving, there's nothing like the Sewell customer service. Everything is seamless and everything is well calculated, well thought out. I would love to think that it's just me, but I know that they do this for every customer. I'm a Sewell customer for life. Discover our wide variety of new and certified pre-owned vehicles at Sewell Cadillac. What if you could use retirement accounts to invest in crypto? With iTrust Capital, you can. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in your favorite crypto assets 24-7 with the tax benefits of an IRA. So instead of paying taxes on your crypto gains every year, you can defer taxes till you retire using an iTrust IRA. Or with an iTrust Roth IRA, you can withdraw tax-free at retirement because you're in this for the long haul. Start investing today at iTrustCapital.com. It's a 6-0 lead for the Longhorns. I guess the good news for LSU is they no longer have to look at Tristan Stevens on the mound. Now new pitcher out of the pin for Texas. First reliever of the night. And Andre Duplantier, the second. Great start to his 22 season. 2-0 already. 11 innings pitched. 0.82 earned run average. You see the K-walk ratio, 7-4. And the Plantier, a strong right hitter, low 90s fastball. Yeah, Summer as well the fall, yeah. Summer Creek High School product from Mumble. See that uniform number 88. I don't know if that looks quite right. A baseball player, Billy Patch wore 88 once, and uh, Albert Bell wore that number at one point. I don't quite remember Bill Leonard, but I, uh, I see the picture. The Plantier with a good curveball and a changeup behind that fastball. There's more of a true curve. That 11 to 4 type break. Dylan Cruz will lead off this frame, so it is the heart of the lineup for LSU. Cruz, Doty, and Barry. Cruz has singled one of the five LSU base hits. But of those five, every single one of those was a single. Cruz is going to leash on the air by Daly. And you say there's a chance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, pretty routine ground ball, and Daly puts himself in good position. I think just picked the glove up too quickly. Not the way to plant the eight. We're going to start this inning here, especially in the middle of this LSU lineup where things can get fairly dangerous. Okay, Doty looking for some late inning magic again. Okay, Doty with some fireworks last night. We talked about the home run that tied the game up against OU late in the game, then the double that tied the game again. That really set the table for Jordan Robertson's walk-off home run in the 11th. But it was Kay Doty who delivered big time for the Tigers when they needed it the most to get the Tigers back in that ball game yesterday. to Plantier from the stretch. Runs one on the outside corner for a cold strike again. I'm thinking there's going to be some relationship to the DePlantier that pitched at Weiss a few years ago. It's like the same thing. Wasn't he a Katie product, though? I believe than so, Kingman? yeah. Three and one. It's 
cousin John. Is that nice? No, it is. Oh, the yeah. That's ball four, so an air and a walk. And all of a sudden, you've given the Tigers a little bit of hope. You've given this fan base something to re-engage with. Yeah, you just never say never with this lineup. And especially in the middle of this lineup, you've got now you've got to deal with Jacob Berry. Jordan tops after that. Brayton Gilbert. It doesn't get any easier from here. Yeah, John Duplantier. So he was a high round draft pick as well. Certainly was. Yeah. Adam Pierce on the phone. Get that Texas bullpen activated. It almost feels like every time Jacob Berry steps in the box, he's much wa must watch TV just because of that, that possibility of landing one on the other side of a fence. And we talked about the power from both sides of the plate. The Plantier staying away from him the first pitch and the second pitch. I think Barry cared for that. Yeah, he thought that ball was down. And Kent Fagan, the home plate umpire, disagreed. Jay Johnson said he wanted this kid the minute he saw a video from him for the first time, and he said that rarely, if ever, happens. <laughs> I'll take a rip of O2, don't you? He wasn't going to go down looking after that previous pitch was called a strike. Longhorns could use it out. They're going to get one here. Base hit right field. Cruz will be held at third. No reason to risk it out potentially at the plate. Down six runs. Error, walk, single. Bases for the Tigers. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> this is what uh, these late inning uh, comeback Not games for the Tigers. They have uh, already established themselves they can do it. By the way, of uh, beating Oklahoma yesterday. And a few fans said, here we go. Right back in this game. One swing of the bat by Thompson to do it. David Pierce would be a bit pensive down in that dugout. Jordan Thompson the batter. Pretty nasty first pitch strike. Nice breaking ball. And we're off that front elbow of, of Thompson. It's a Tiger at every base. Cruz, Doty, and Barry. And the only loss of the season for LSU, Thompson had a rough game defensively at the Love Shack in Ruston against La Tech. Maybe got some of those good fortunes back with the walk-off yesterday. Just a base hit here would really kickstart a little more possibility for the Fighting Tigers. A wave of a miss. Well, the Plantier went slider, slider. I'm sorry, curveball, curveball slider. Pitch tied up Thompson his last at bat against Stevens. Up in the zone. Thompson wanted to pull the trigger yeah. though, didn't he? Hey, the Clentier got underneath that slider, stayed up and kind of flattened out in the zone. And probably lucky it was so high. Yeah. Almost pulled the trigger. Bases loaded, hard hit, foul outside of third base. Behind Dylan Cruz. Thompson in a sequence, all five pitches have been breaking balls. Have it all 
the six. And the slider misses again up in the zone. Well, nowhere to put him. Some life back in this building with nearly 25,000 fans. And that phone line has been busy this inning. Here's a payoff. Foul again outside of third base. And a slider yet again, so Texas just not going to give into that fastball with Thompson. Glad to making his 19th pitch of the inning. The have not recorded an out. Air walk single. Fly ball. Cota the third. Almost back to the running track. Is it pretty well? Cruz is going to tag and score the first LSU run of the game, and the other runners also advance. It's a 6 1 contest. Oh, a great bet by Topsy. He finally does get the fastball and puts it up in the air for the sack fly. And all the Tigers move up. So Plantier gets the big first out here. In the eighth inning, the Tigers score their first run. Unearned, but the Tigers will certainly take it. Braden Jobert is 0 for 3. Got off to a really good start for LSU. And a slide out there with four home runs. And he appears out of the dugout. Uh, that'll be the night for the Plantier. I think Davis is going to start playing the matchup game himself here. So the conversation ongoing on the mound. A run home. Two more runners. In scoring position for the Tigers. Played umpire Clint Fagan on his way out to the mound to speed the proceedings along just a bit. Yep, here she's gonna stay with the Plantier. We've got a couple of left handers back to back here coming up for the Tigers. Pearson follows Gilbert. Pierce is going to stick with his big right hander. When Jay Johnson got this job at LSU, you would imagine the process is evaluating your own team first. You go back, you watch some games, you look at video. Joe Bear was one of those guys who kind of stood out. There was a possibility of more, seeing what he could produce. And a guy who had 16 home runs at the junior college level. And you start to think how that might apply to the SEC, how that might play at LSU. Well, four home runs in the season already. Definitely get the pop. And an advantage count. Just a base hit would cut this deficit in half. A little bit up and out. All of a sudden, it's 3 0. Almost like you're pitching around, Joe Bear, but you certainly don't want to do that in this situation. And a five run lead. Gotta be thinking no freebies and make LSU earn it. And fastball catches the outside corner. Sweat dripping off the chin of Duplantier. A 3 1 pitch to Joe Bear. It's outside, and the bases are loaded again. The catcher, McManus, due up. Pearson pinch hit for Dugas in this spot. 
Then McManus stayed in here. He came in to catch. And Stevenson became the new left fielder. Adding ninth. And Coach Pierce has been on that phone about the entire inning. <laughs> I promise you he's not sending telegrams. He's wanting to hear, is my guy ready? And McMahon is taking one up in the zone. Thank you. Duplantier in Texas. He's thinking something down in the zone, trying to Induce that ground ball by McManus. And are you sticking with Duplantier a little bit longer because of the unknown of Nixon and not having him for an extended period of time? I think that probably plays into the decision here. In any other situation, you've probably got Aaron Nixon in to try to nail down this win. So, or they feel like you've got to get to the ninth if you're going to use Nixon. Well, there's no all. doubt. I yeah. mean, you have to navigate through this inning. But there might be a pitcher in the bullpen you would like to throw the ninth, too, that you don't want to have to throw in the eighth. Exactly. Good breaking ball there from the Plantier. He gets ahead of McManus. I think the Plantier comes right back with that pitch. That's been his best pitch this inning. He did indeed. Big out, two gone. Oh, a nasty curveball. We've seen the tighter slider. That, uh, that pitch has a little more depth to it. He goes right back, gets the strikeout. Big out number two for Duplantier. And this is going to be it for him. Pierce will make the call and go with his left hander. Going to bring on the lefty to face to Giacomo. The scheduled hitter with the bases loaded, two outs, and a run home here in this LSU eighth inning. 28 pitches for the Plantier in relief. That leadoff air allowing Cruz to reach and score really hindered the cause this frame. We'll step aside, come back to tell you the new Texas lefty right after this. It's your turn. No, but I think it's your turn. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Go. I appreciate your appreciation. It fills me. Safe drivers save money with farmers. Just for driving safely? It's a farmer's policy perk. Get farmers and you can get a safe driver discount simply for having a clean driving record for three years. Come on. After you. After you. Safety first. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Wow. Perfect. I think red is more me. Giddy up. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota. Let's go places. What if your resume was more than a resume? What if it could adapt and improve? What if it opened doors you didn't know existed? Created opportunities that let you be seen, heard, even help get your foot in the door? I got it. An Indeed resume never stops working for you. Well, the lefty Harrison comes on out of the bullpen for the Longhorns. A yeah, good look at Luke Harrison. Six foot two, 175 pounder. Great numbers of the season so far, making his fourth appearance. Six innings, three hits, yet to go up an earned run. Five punch outs, one walk. And then it appears says about Luke Harrison is he is one cool customer. Really trust him coming into tight situations. Back end part of this Texas bullpen. Not going to blow you away with his velocity. Upper 80s, but really commands the zone well. 
has a good curveball changeup, but just commands the strike zone. To Giacomo, the left-handed hitter, was the scheduled batter. And now the Tigers will counter with Hayden Travinsky. Travinsky doesn't have an official at bat all year. So here you go, bases loaded, Minute Maid Park, 25,000 fans, go get them. Fastball to start the sequence, catches the outside corner. Thought we might see Drew Bianco in that situation, but I was curious. Yeah, Bianco's uh, hitless on the year as well. And that fastball gets by. Just let me get a piece of it. LSU has scored its long run of the game in this inning. They have the bases loaded, but two outs and out two strikes on Travinsky. Texas defense back. Infield back, outfield, a couple of steps back, trying to take away the double. Pitch is unhittable, Pat. Man, nasty pitch. How about Luke Harrison coming in? Good morning, good afternoon, and good night on the Tiger Rally. He takes it to the dugout, and the Horns hold on to a five-run lead going into the night. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for TV when you can get AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV? Get the channels you want with the teams you love for the price that others can't beat. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. I want to beat cancer. I'm going to beat it. That's no doubt in my mind. I'm going to win this battle. Defeating cancer will take all of us. Join our team to help fund game-changing research that saves lives. At the V Foundation, V is for victory over cancer. V is for victory over the odds. V is for victory over health disparities. Victory over setbacks. Victory over the unknown. V is for victory over giving up. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Join our team to help save lives. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. 100% of donations fund game-changing cancer research. Donate now at V.org. When it rains, it pours. A little drip, a little drop. Sprinkle in some pick and pop. And you have yourself a splash-tastic formula so divine it gives Houston's finest no problem finding twine. This was the final pitch in the bottom of the eighth to Travinsky. The backdoor breaking ball. No, 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 he says. That's not a strike. Yeah, tough pitch. Yeah, so probably you foul that under one of those that's just too close to take, especially this late in the game. you got to swing the bat. You know, it might have been down a tad in his mind, but uh, really close to the bottom of that strike zone. It's one of those situations, Brett, you tell your players, don't let the umpire make that determination. You you go ahead and swing the bat if you have any any doubts. Mikhail Lansville, the Centennial Colorado freshman, enters the game in the top of the ninth. Dylan Campbell laid off nine, one and two, due up for the Horns. Lansville stands at six foot. And has really good pitch ability with the fastball. 89 to 93 in that range. And Jay Johnson says he feels like he has starter capabilities. And obviously, he needs to get his feet wet at this power five level. Two to him. Lansville's second appearance of the season. 
first one didn't go so well, so chance here for him to improve those stats. Next one to Campbell, big rip at a miss. 91 of the gun. LSU made a handful of defensive changes again. Stevenson went from left to right. And Bianco is the new left fielder. Right small in your lineup card when Jay Johnson gets out there. You're gonna need, <laughs> you're gonna need some additional space. Keeps us on our toes. I like it. On the ground to third, right to Bear. Throw across in plenty of time to get Campbell. For the first out of the ninth inning. In case you're curious about the schedule tomorrow, Tennessee and Oklahoma, the first game at 11.05. Texas will be back for the second game at 3.05 against UCLA, so the Bruins and the Horns, and LSU will play the night game against Baylor. Do you know that schedule in advance, or do you just go game to game or work it all night? I try not to look ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a wise scheduling philosophy. Focus on the game in front of me. Right, uh, what other cliche could I use? <laughs> no, it's funny. <laughs> and maybe it's just because I'm getting up there in years. When you start thinking about this college classic in advance, a couple of weeks out, you start watching these teams. When I rattle off the six, I forget one every time, and it's a different <laughs> one. <laughs> that's okay, Brett. We always have fun, though. That's uh, that's the point. I'm like, how do I not know all six? I've been watching their games, all six of their games and reading the releases for weeks yeah I, I think it's harder though it's like I told you tonight it's, it's you get in this tournament and the games are so good and I, I like doing all nine because I, I just stay in the flow of each game I I learn these players and start to learn tendencies and, and then I, I, I think to myself they actually pay me to do this job well, <laughs> you are kind of a prisoner of war we don't feed you much and sit in my corner to right center field Stevenson over to cut it off and play it back in. Cody dropped that throw, and it rolled away. He had an air handling a relay throw earlier that led to a Texas run. Oh, he's got the ejecto mitt with balls in the outfield. In fact, it was Hodo who got the base hit previously, who was able to score from second on a liner to right and an air. And it brings up Barry Kennedy, the two-hole hitter. Run base another three times today. His average hitting at 424 in the season. Yeah, Kennedy's swinging the bat well and obviously seeing the ball. Well, that uh, catch by Giacomo in right field robbed him of extra bases. Hard hit right to second. Donnie's got it. And Morgan had to play that pass, but he gets the double play. That ball was scolded. And two outs result. Wow. Absolutely ripped. Going to send us to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for LSU. Spring training is back in the Palm Beaches this spring. Experience Astros baseball, plus the best beaches, dining, and entertainment after the game. There's nothing better than Astros spring ball in sunny Florida. For tickets and more, visit astros.com slash spring to book your trip. Plan your visit now to the spring training home of the Houston Astros. The Palm Beaches. Watch me. Watch me roam. Discover. Explore. The forest is quiet. The river will roar. One slip by the fire is all it took. But they made my arm better. Just take a look. Under moon and stars. That's where I love to stay. Let's go play in the woods. I'll show you the way. Watch me. The place to turn for any bird. Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. Watch me. Watch me pirouette with style and grace. 
An open floor of inspiration. This is my place. Five positions to start, leotard and tights. A story through movement, under music and lights. Straight and tall, they promised I'd stand. I'm a ballerina who twirls like the blades of a fan. Watch me. Innovative scoliosis treatment at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. We get to the bottom of the ninth in this much anticipated matchup between the college baseball Blue Bloods and the Texas Longhorns and LSU Tigers. Texas got four runs in the second inning, including three and a homer from Douglas Hodo the third, and it's held up to this point. The lone run for LSU was an unearned tally last inning in the bottom of the eighth. But Pat LSU's left 10 men on base today. Yeah, that's been a major problem. It's, uh, you know, they had opportunities. The issue for them was having to face Tristan Stevens, who just made quality pitch after pitch, worked ahead most of the evening, and made it really difficult for LSU hitters to square him up. Jack Merrifield, the pinch hitter here. For Stevenson, of course, had the big opportunity with the bases loaded last inning, only to squeeze out the one run on the sack fly by Thompson. Quickly, nothing in two. See the numbers on the season for Maryfield. Another Louisiana homegrown product. Oh, good. Wow. <laughs> five pitches, all strikes for Harrison, and then he threw one five feet behind Maryfield. Almost hit the bull. <laughs> I think he did. Holy smokes. As a hitter, you're like, that's, yeah, not even close. <laughs> That'll keep you loose in the box. I'm telling you, man, how do you look so good for five and throw that one? But Well, Luke Harrison able to get the horns out of that previous inning. Big strikeout looking against Travinsky and some great pitches. Smith badly in these last three. Yeah, all of a sudden just kind of lost it. Oh, you like that? Step off the mound, regroup, take a breath. Recalibrate. Yep. My goodness. Yeah, that's just odd. From one pitch to the right, one pitch to the left, that was about a span of 12 feet yeah, that he was uh, missing. Almost like a golfer gets the yips on the putting green, right? Uh, six, two or three putts in a row, and all of a sudden just loses it. Let's see if Harrison can, uh, can regain himself here. It's also now back to the top of the lineup. And Trey Morgan, who's 0 for 3, was hit by a pitch back in the third inning. Texas is going to play Melinda's back behind Maryfield at first base. There it is, put it back in the zone. Found it. Yep. Hey, don't say, don't say just a goofy left-hander. I don't want to hear that. It's, well, it's, I thought he was going to start talking to himself on the mound. <laughs> Ground ball to short. Can this be two? Yes. Double play. Voltini to Daly. On to Melinda. And that'll shoot down to its final out. It's all part of the strategy from Harrison. Get the leadoff walk after going 0-2, then uh, get the ground ball double play. One pitch, two outs. Nice turn, Trey Morgan. Yeah, nice turn by those two guys up the middle, Faltini and Daly. They are smooth. You know, some of these Texas pitchers have said, when questioned about why they're so good, they say, "Look at I, what I've got behind me." That's <laughs> right. Just pound the strike zone. I think Tristan Stevens should get to do it, right? It's outside of Cruz. Cruz has scored the lone LSU run, and he reached on an air and came across last inning.
fouled outside of third base. Backdoor just missed. It's been a theme tonight of some outstanding pitches, those backdoor breaking balls for called strikes and big time situations. Well, this Texas pitching staff is legit. In the air to right center. Douglas Hodo the third is there, leaping high. He can't make the catch. There's a play by Cameron. Cameron caught the ricochet. Oh my and that's goodness. how this game between these two Titans will end. When was the last time you saw an 8 9? Oh my put goodness. Out? You gotta be kidding me. Yep, that's gonna go down as an assist for Hodo. I think it hit the fence. Wow, that's gonna be the question. I think it yeah, hit the off fence. his glove, but it did hit the fence and come back. I thought the carom out of the glove of Hodo yeah. hit the chain link bullpen fence there you before take a Campbell look. caught it. Yep. Now the question is, where would you put the base runner? Because of course Cruz stops running. Once he sees the umpire indicate out. Yeah, that's going to be a question if they do indeed rule this ball as a fair ball off the fence. Well, that was awfully close. You have to slow this one way down to see the ball off the glove of Douglas Hodo. This will be a great angle here. Yeah, a good angle here. Yep. I don't exactly think there's right. any way it didn't hit the fence. See, oh, it's off the, the fence. Yeah. Right. Yep. Campbell celebrated. He had to have known that came off the padding. Yeah, that was pretty clear here from the first replay. So that's going to be the question, Brett. You're exactly right. Where do you put Cruz, second or third? I guess you put him in second and call it good. Yeah, right? he called a ground rule double, but. Uh, yeah, I don't think the call immediately from second base umpire Michael Durantis was out. I thought it went off the wall initially, but then, you know, you see the celebration from Campbell and the, the cheer from the Longhorn fans. Well, I mean, it, you, know, you might say Dylan Campbell is going to be a heck of a salesman one day, but they did a great job selling that catch. <laughs> well, what a seen, dynamic play to begin with. I mean, no, just, there's no doubt. Yeah. But the bizarre plays we've seen in six games in two days, well, we, we always tell you in the game, just stick around. If you haven't seen something odd happen in baseball, just watch a few more games. There's a good chance. But, yeah, certainly in this tournament, Brett, we've seen some crazy plays. I don't think there's any doubt that Dylan Cruz will be on base. The question is where. We'll find out soon. If we had fireworks at Minute Maid Park, we'd have to reload. They'd be celebrating, and they're going right. to put they're putting it back Cruz to first base. At first yeah. base, he's saying, "What are you talking about?" Wow. Now Jay Johnson wants to know. Yeah. They're going to make the argument that uh, he was already at second base when the ball was blown dead or called dead, and by rule, if a play is changed from a catch to no catch, only first base is awarded. So that even makes it more of an odd play. Dig, dig deep in that rule book. Jay Johnson not happy. I guess the good news is the Tigers are still alive. Yeah. Well, Jay's going to lose the argument, but I get his point. He's like, hey, that's a sure double for my player. Well, I understand, but I think yeah. the other part of that is if this was a one-run game or a two-run game, it'd be a lot different. Oh, man, alive. We were talking about the potential <laughs> tag win a scoring position yeah. versus being at first. They are going to need a lot more to happen right now. doesn't change the rule. The rule is what it is. Correct. But, uh, yeah, it's, that is an odd rule in baseball. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a play like that where a catch gets changed to no catch. And the player is only awarded first base. That's a first for me. That's twice. Chase it. <laughs> well, there's those uh, calls that you just know your expectation is. The other side's not going to like it. And certainly Jay Johnson did his best job to stick up for his player. You don't blame him for that. But, uh, Nothing the umpires can do about the rule book. It is what it is. 
I thought we were going to see the first 8 9 put out <laughs> in my 30 years of calling baseball. Instead, we get a single that went yeah. off the fence 390 feet away. Just amazing on both ends of that that, first of all, Douglas Hoda was able to get to that ball in right center. And Cruz only gets first base out of it. Kane Doty, after all that, is the batter. And he's going to send one fair inside the third base back. Puts off the short fence and propels out into left field. And this is going to be a double for Doty. How about the big hits Kane Doty has had in two games? Well, he just continues to come through with when the Tigers need it the most. Unfazed by the moment. Been captain clutch all weekend for these Tigers. How about the heads up play by Faltini to go chase that ball down from shortstop position and the ball caroms off the spec sign there is the Grand absolutely have out. to do the distance part. A left fielder may not be able to get there. The shortstop needs yep. to make that play and he needs to go out to left field on low line drives that might hit the bricks above the Crawford box and shoot back to yeah. back in. Yeah, Faltini, uh, great hustle that play. That that holds Cruz at third base. If he doesn't do that, he scores. Switch hitter Jacob Berry turns around and bats right handed. He's got a couple of singles today. If LSU doesn't score here in the ninth, they will have left 12 men on base for the game. They only have eight hits. They have the same number of hits as Texas. Trail 6 1. It's a little bit outside. It's 2 0 to Berry. Well, Harrison pitching very tight. And this is with the slider in, fastball away. Now behind on the count, 2 0. You've got to be thinking no freebies here at the five run lead. You've got to go after Barry. 2 0 pitch on the ground to third. Good on Messenger. And that will end the game. And the undefeated Texas Longhorns. The undisputed number one take down the LSU Tigers six to one at Minute Maid Park, and they improve to 11 and 0. The story tonight is uh, that vaunted Tex Texas pitching staff and Tristan Stevens. What a start for him tonight, holding this powerful Texas lineup, and this powerful LSU lineup to no runs in his start. He continues his dominance. He was fantastic today. Tip of the hat to these fans, 24,787. The Longhorns and their faithful will go home happy tonight. And again tomorrow, Texas will play UCLA in the second game. LSU will play the nightcap against the Baylor Bears and will kick things off at 11.05 Central Time when Tennessee and Oklahoma get day three underway from downtown Houston. What a night of college baseball. Glad you could participate. Hope to have you along tomorrow. Texas Longhorns had a four-run second inning. Douglas Soto had the big home run. And the Longhorns now 11-0 with the victory. So the Big 12 gets the better of the SEC tonight. For Pat Combs and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan thanking you for watching. What a great spectacle of college baseball. The Mountain Report coming up next. We say so long and good night from Minute Maid, the Texas Longhorns over the LSU Tigers. Six to one. Good night, everybody. Dion, hand it over. Now, how does that make you feel? Like a part of me is missing. Gabrielle? This Old Spice Fiji Hand and Body Lotion has me smoother than ever. I swear it does. I don't think I can do this! You said you wanted to feel the power of Cricket 5G. I thought you meant, like, live streaming! Oh, we're live streaming, all right. Let's roll! Ah! Smile, you're on Cricket.